good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Somebody just checked in from uh, Curtis from uh, Smoky Seattle. God, it went a heartbreak on the on the west coast of the United States with all these really weirdly happening fires. Okay, let's go ahead and get airborne. I'm going to talk about trading the Death Star. Now, uh, I have two, I have three kids, but two of them are Star Wars nerds. If you're familiar with this whole Star Wars trilogy, you know about the Death Star. This thing was taken over the universe, almost got knocked out, uh, you know, by the rebels, and then it didn't. It actually became stronger and more powerful. Uh, that's the stock I'm going to talk about today. I, I call it the Death Star because the stock is literally taking over uh, the universe. And there's absolutely no comparison to it. And this might be the only stock that you need to own in your portfolio. And that might not, that, that might just turn some of you 90 degrees and have your head, you know, your head tilt like the old uh, RCA dog. I'm old enough to remember what records are and the RCA dog, but I'm gonna explain it to you uh, in a couple minutes. We're having an absolute fantastic time uh, in the service. You can probably guess uh, by some of the uh, current testimonials from some of my uh, current members, what the stock is that we're gonna be talking about. We have people who are absolutely crushing it with just one stock, Amazon, $101,000, $78,000, $4,200, uh, $1.1 million. Folks, these are current members. These are current testimonials. Welcome to Solo Amazon. Quick question. Absolutely has nothing to do with trading where it absolutely has everything to do with trading. Why? Because I want to ask you a question. Which fighter aircraft would you rather fly? I'm going to give you two choices. There's your first choice. Choice A is the F4 Phantom. Take a look at that cockpit, folks. You, you don't even have to know a lot about aviation to know that is a very pilot intensive cockpit. Look at that. Over 300 switches and dials in that cockpit. The pilot would have to spend a lot of what we call heads down time looking at all of this stuff instead of looking out the window at potential surface air missile threats or AAA anti-aircraft artillery or enemy MiGs, right? Very, very labor intensive aircraft. Would you rather fly that or this? The F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Take a look at that cockpit, folks two flat panel displays that's it <laughs> there is not one what we call steam gauge in that cockpit completely we, we actually call this jet the wonder woman jet why well it's invisible to radar there is not a radar on the planet when this aircraft is flying in its complete stealth mode that can see it Anybody remember about a month ago, all these mysterious explosions reported around the Iranian suspected nuclear sites and weapons. I, Israel has two operational F-35 squadrons and they pounded the heck out of Iranian uh, nuke plants. Never saw them. This jet is it's also called a Wonder Woman jet because they see through it. If you've ever seen an F-35 pilot's helmet, when they look down, they don't see their knees or, or their feet or the cockpit. They see through the aircraft because of all the sensors. Everything is displayed to the pilot's helmet. So clearly, ladies and gentlemen, if, if even if you don't know anything about aviation, you know the only aircraft out of those two you'd rather fly is that one. So do me a favor, turn off uh, you know, the, your distractions, silence the electronic nicotine because you've never heard what I'm about to tell you. As a matter of fact, you've heard the exact opposite of what I'm about to tell you, okay? At the, by the end of this brief, folks, I'm gonna give you an up-to-date intelligence brief. Why? Because the market is living, breathing, and we went from being down 300 points this morning to the Dow is currently up two points. So I gotta give you an up-to-date intelligence brief. I'm gonna show you the only stock you need to own. And if that doesn't compute, you've been lied to. And a good substitute to trade in case this stock is a little pricey for you, a good, substitute. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign is Wiz. I flew the FA-18 Hornet uh, for 15 years for the United States Navy. I graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School, uh, which you guys know as Top Gun, as an adversary pilot, meaning I was a bad, 
I was a good bad guy. <laughs> I was a bad guy pilot and did some uh, flew some combat sorties off the USS Abraham Lincoln and uh, Kitty Hawk over uh, Iraq. Always, always, always interested in finance. You don't join the Navy to get rich. You join the Navy to serve your country, see the world. But I taught myself about finance, right? And, you know, save 25 bucks here, send it to USAA for my first mutual fund in like 1991. But as I became a fighter pilot, I started to apply everything I was learning to my trading, right? Having a strategy, being disciplined, into implementing tactics, contingency planning, knowing when to get out of a good or bad situation before it got worse. And it worked extremely well. I eventually popped up on the radar of one of the largest volatility arbitrage firms in the world, headquartered right there in the Chicago Board of Trade. You see those big vertical windows right there? That's the fourth and fifth floor uh, of the CBOT. Uh, and I, I had an absolute uh, had an absolute blast. I helped build a hedge fund when I was there. I helped build the retail brokerage uh, known as Options House, which uh, eventually uh, got wrapped into E Trade right now. And it was just it was a blast. I went from being lowly old retail trader to the big leagues. Felt like Valentine uh, in trading places, man. Right? The smart money. Well. I kind of figured out that I am the smart money. We are the smart money. The smart money ain't that smart. Uh, for example, this COVID crash. I predicted the COVID market crash to the day, and we made millionaires here at Top Gun Options. And on the way down, as all the experts told you to buy the dip, and oh, this is the bottom, and I'd nibble here, and I'd definitely be a buyer here, I said to sell every one of those. And I got the turnaround almost to the to the second as the market rallied. Smart money ain't that smart. So when I was up there, I was the managing director of strategy uh, for this multi-billion dollar options firm. And then I was the founder and CEO of the Options News Network, ONN.TV, kind of the CNBC uh, for options. These guys, it was great. Uh, you know, I know John and Pete, uh, Nigerian, they try and, you know, they do their best with options on CNBC, but it's kind of an afterthought, right? CNBC is all stock. So we had the Options News Network and I had an absolute uh, blast. Also do some charity work down here in Florida, Broward Church Advisory uh, Council. Lost a sister to a drunk driver, unfortunately, so I, uh, I'm on the board of MAD. And then I started my own foundation recently to prevent, uh, try and stop a veteran suicide called Top Gun uh, Fighter uh, Foundation. It's just, uh, it's a tragedy that we, we essentially lose more people home than we ever did uh, overseas. 22 veterans uh, on average kill themselves every day. That's almost one an hour, and we need to stop that. Okay, let's go ahead and get airborne and talk about uh, what we're going to talk about today, trading the Death Star. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to shock some of you, and it's not going to shock some of you. Wall Street's lying to you. I've seen it. <laughs> I went from being you up to Wall Street and then left because I couldn't stand it. It was it's, They pushed their own mother in front of a, a bus for a dollar. Not me, man. I, I started Topkin Options 10 years ago to put their ladder down and help people like you. But Wall Street's lying to you. Who's lying to you? These folks. Have you ever been told in your investing career, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? How many, I, you don't even have to tell me. Everybody in this room has been told not to put all the eggs in one basket. How about this? You must diversify. Diversification is important. And there's, Every time you've ever thought about doing anything, a professional would tell you what? You must diversify. Why? Because they want your money. You ever seen The Wolf of Wall Street or Boiler Room or, you know, the movie? All right, you know, all right, fellas, open up your Rolodex and call the little old ladies in tennis shoes and rotate them out of this stock and put them in this one. Hey, good morning, ma'am. Oh, I know, I know I told you to get into this stock yesterday and you did, but now it's time to get into this commissions. Commissions. It's called churn, C H U R N. Brokers make money, registered investment advisors, broke, they make money on commissions or order flow, right? Ladies and gentlemen, they wanted you in so many names because they wanted so much commissions. It's a fact. I saw it. I lived it. But I'm going to tell you right now, and this is what is going to be news to you. 
diversification, having a lot of names, is stupid. Diversifying is for people who don't know what they're doing. Think about that. Oh, well, don't listen to me. Listen to him. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. Think about that. If you know what you're doing, why are you diversifying? It makes no sense. The only stock that you need to own for the rest of your existence on this big blue marble is Amazon, period. What? You heard me. But it, it, don't, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, look at the picture. The last couple earnings, I, there's no other stock in the world that does this. The last couple earnings uh, uh, calls and, and number, I didn't even, I, the, the numbers don't make sense. The math is gone. At one point, Amazon was making like $10,000 every half a second of every day. The COVID crash has been one of the best things to happen for Amazon. Everybody's stuck inside buying their yoga pants. Nobody going out. It's been horrific for small businesses. Amazon has risen from the ashes uh, of this COVID crash and will keep going, period. I'm, it's just, it, it, it's, it's absolutely uh, insane. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But like I said, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and I, I, can, I can point you in the direction of so many of our current members who, uh, I mean, solo Amazon a year ago was at 1400 bucks. I predicted by my birthday this year, subtle hint, New Year's Eve, December 31st, Amazon would be a $3,000 stock. I got it wrong. What do you mean? Amazon hit 3000 last month, not December 31st of this year. Amazon, you ready for this? By my birthday of this year, here's your new update, will be a $4,000 stock. Okay. So um, before I, I just sit here and blow smoke and sunshine and how great this is, I, as a fighter pilot and an options trader, need to brief you on the threats. What are the potential threats to just owning a single name? The risks to own, to just trading one name. Anybody ever hear of Lehman Brothers? How about Bear Stearns? And Jim Cramer's heard of Bear Stearns, right? Bear Stearns at 70 bucks at the height of the financial crisis. Jim Cramer, ah, Bear Stearns is safe. It's awesome. 70 bucks. It's a steal here at 70. Two days later, it was at zero. How about Pets.com? <laughs> Enron. The, I could sit here for the rest of the day, folks, and, and rattle off. Uh, names from the graveyard of stocks that have gone to zero. But even in these just handful of examples, what's the common theme? The common theme is these companies didn't own a thing. Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, they owned air, folks, got contracts, paper. They didn't, I don't even think they owned the sign that they were taking down, Lehman Brothers. Pets.com owned a smelly sock and a domain name. Enron was a middleman of electricity. They didn't even own the building they were in. They didn't own anything, folks. So when you don't own anything, your stock can go to zero, right? What are some other potential threats? How about that dude? About two, I don't know, two and a half years ago, Donald Trump woke up or didn't go to bed, whichever you believe, grabbed his phone and started ripping apart Jeff Bezos, the Washington Post, and Amazon. Amazon screwing the post office. The post office is bankrupt because of Amazon's using it. You know what? Full disclosure, I flew for FedEx for 10 months when I got off active duty. I hated it. I couldn't stand the night flying. I was miserable. But I, I, I kept you know, a lot of friends there. And about six years ago, I got a call from a buddy at, at, from Memphis and FedEx. He's like, dude, I just heard from a, a buddy of mine in aircraft leasing that uh, Amazon just leased five jets. I predicted that day to my members that they would launch their own FedEx and UPS. And here we are with Amazon Air. Look outside your window right now. You see that blue truck? Amazon Ground or Amazon Prime. He's doing it all on his – and Trump did this recently too. Like, I don't know, four, three, four, or five months ago, he started ripping apart Amazon and uh, Jeff Bezos and the Postal Service, right? So um, is it a potential threat? Eh, 
not really, to be honest with you. Every time he's gone after Amazon, it's and and remember, folks, the uh, you know, and, and there's some other potential threats, right? Oh, well, it, it's a it's a monopoly. It's a this, and they do not nice activities and stuff like that. Guess what? I think that's fantastic. What do you mean, Wiz? That's not no. Listen to me. At the end of the day, I tell Top Gun Options members that I wear two suits at Top Gun Options. I wear a flight suit, and I'm going to tell you how I feel as an American. I think Amazon is a monopoly. I think it's anti-competitive. I think it uh, underpays its employees, uh, and I think it's a disgrace. That's me as an American. Me as Gordon Gecko, I think all of that is fantastic. I think they should pay their workers half of that to help my share price go up. I love that it's a monopoly and that they use anti-competitive practices. Oh, and by the way, the FTC or the DOJ, it'll take f a ten, 5, 10, 15. Anybody remember Standard Oil, IBM, Microsoft, AT&T? When the government goes, you know what? You might be big. It takes a decade to like come up with even like a suggestion of what to happen. And to be honest with you, Amazon right now, folks, would be worth more broken up than keeping it together. Amazon Air is FedEx and UPS. AWS, Amazon Web Services, is Microsoft. There's Amazon Pharma. They just launched Amazon Music uh, the other day. Whole Foods, it, Blue Origin or whatever the space company's name is. They're getting ready to launch 3,200 low orbit satellites. So everybody on the face of the planet in Antarctica to the, the middle of the Sudan has internet coverage. And guess who's going to, they're going to shop through? Amazon. So it's literally taking over the world. Me as an American, I'll tell you how I feel over a beer. Me as Gordon Gecko, I'm going to use it to print money. And I have and will continue to do so. Right? So now that I said, hey, here's the scary things about just owning one name, what are the benefits, folks? Well, think about it. You trade the same name and potentially profit no matter what direction it goes, up, down, uh, or sideways. You stay focused on the news, the events that impact Amazon instead of a bunch of different stocks and ETFs. You become an expert in Amazon, reducing time spent on other positions. Folks, I have a, uh, I've had a buddy 30 years, almost as long as I've been trading. He's an Apple market maker. He does, I'm not joking when I say that, he doesn't know the stock market exists. He doesn't, he doesn't care. He doesn't know what the VIX is. He doesn't care what the S&P 500 is doing today. All he cares about is what? Apple. He lives, eats, breathes, sleeps Apple. That's it. Think about it, folks. It's like an analyst. If you're, if you're a, uh, uh, an analyst for this company, um, guess what? That's all you study is that name. Okay. Let me, I, 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 this is a perfect example because I know this is going to apply to many of you. I have a buddy, uh, here in South Florida. He's a back, he's an orthopedic surgeon, back guy. Wiz, need help trading, man. Okay, doc, I'll, I'll meet you at Starbucks, right? Go to, this was a year or two years ago. Uh, powers up his laptop, turns it around after he logs into his brokerage account. And I, I'm glad he's a doctor because I fell out of my chair and I hit my head. You ready for this? 33 positions. I, 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 I was speechless. 30, the dude had 33 positions in his portfolio. That's a do eight, 10 hour days, office hours. He does surgery. And maybe in between sessions, he's like, yeah, sometimes, you know, I'll pull up my phone to try and look at. I'm like, oh, my God, Doc, are you kidding me, man? And he tried to stumble through it. Uh, I think this is a pot stock. I don't know what it is. Anyway, this one, uh, it's been getting hammered for years. I'm waiting for it to come back to uh, get out of it. And then I'm like, okay, Doc, stop talking. Enough. Stop. You have got to get out of this. There's no way on God's green earth you are doing well at any of it. Folks, I do this for a living. At Top Gun Options, I manage four portfolios. If you have, as a retail trader, if you have any more than five positions on, it's, you, you shouldn't. I'll leave it at that. I do this for a living. 
and that's a lot. Five to ten, right? How are how do you how, you can't? I'm, I'm I'm just telling you. I know for a fact you can't. This is what you need to be doing as a retail trader, right? Even full time. I'm telling you, folks, simplify your trading cockpit by trading one name. Now, if this just doesn't compute, which I, I love what you're saying. But it just, I guess they really program me. I have to diversify, you know, just it's its its a must. I have to diversify. There it is right there. We also, in this service, trade XLY. That's the Consumer Discretionary ETF. Why would I trade this? Well, Amazon right now is about a $3,000 stock. Even with options, it might be a little pricey to trade. Why would I trade XLY? Somebody tell me what the top holding of the XLY is. It's Amazon, 25%. A quarter of this ETF is Amazon. So if you're a, I must diversify, does not compute otherwise, Home Depot, McDonald's, Nike, uh, Starbucks, Lowe's, Booking, TGX, Target, GM. There, ladies and gentlemen, is your diversification. It's on the screen. So we also trade XLY. I have an XLY bear call spread on for the week that I'll show you in a couple minutes. That is looking fantastic. So how do we target Amazon and XLY for max profit? Easy. As an options trader, I'm going to teach you how to get in your jet and fly into the future and establish what I call a base position, almost like a a marine amphibious landing. We're going to establish a beachhead. We can fly out in time and establish what I call a base position, bullish. Folks, Amazon, two years from now is a $6,000 stock, period. I will be, we have members making six figures in this name, even with one contract. I'm going to teach you a tactic called synthetic stock or a long call diagonal. What's in parentheses right there? Something very, very, very important. Protective puts. As the name implies, they're protecting my position. Folks, I never went flying in the F-18 Hornet and went out to the jet and said, hey, chief, do me a favor. What's up, sir? Pull the ejection seat out of the aircraft. I'd rather have 800 pounds more of gas. I'm not going to die today. That would have been the day that I died. <laughs> That's when the music died, right? No, so I'm going to teach you how to put on a bullish position, but also how to protect it. Then after we have established our base position, we can sell upside calls, for example, in the front. What's the front month? You're sitting in a front month, September, October, November. Those are the front months, right? I'll show you on an options chain in a couple minutes what I mean by the front months. But if Amazon or XLY is going up, we could do some bull put spreads, some bull call spreads, or buy some calls. Uh-oh, Amazon's going down or uh, XLY is going down a little bit. Okay, who cares? Bearish spreads, and we'll sell some front month calls against it. We can even, as an options trader, make money if it's moving sideways with a tactic called an iron condor. Isn't that awesome? So it, let me go ahead and do that right now. Let me pull up my brokerage platform uh, and we'll talk about some stuff. Because right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to do something that I told you to do. How's my XLY doing? I got an XLY, here you go. Here's an XLY bear call spread out to uh, next Friday. That's up, uh, about, what's that, about 1,700 bucks, good. Here's what I'm not going to do. I am not going to fly out into the future and put on a bullish trade. Wait, you just said you teach us how to do that. Absolutely not. If you've been sleeping for the past 25 minutes, you need to sit up and listen to me. We make money over here in this white space, don't we? There's not one person in this room that makes money trading off the left side of a chart. Any, any of you have a broker who makes lets you trade off the left side of a chart? No, of course not. We have to project our thoughts forward in space and time. That's where we make the money. 
but there is an absolute massive wall between here and the future. And I have a nice little acronym, D-R-I-N-C. I call it the drink wall. And it actually has a date. Anybody know what that date is? The election. Unless you've been on the other side of the moon for the past, well, I'd say the past three and a half years, we got an election coming up. And this acronym stands for Democrats, Russia, Iran, North Korea, China. I love saying China like Trump. China. I am predicting here's exactly what's going to happen. I predicted the Trump election uh, against Clinton and the market rally. Wall Street got it wrong. I predicted the COVID crash to the day. Wall Street got it wrong. I'm going to be right about this. We, mm, tomorrow, maybe next week, we'll get stimulus passed. Nancy, Chuck, Trump will finally get together and pass something. Okay. New hope for the stimulus bill, what could be in it. So we are going to get a little bit of a relief pop here. Okay. And then this is going to happen. Here is what is going to happen on election day. Donald Trump, most likely. I don't care if you like Trump, hate him, like Biden, hate him. I'm talking the market. Donald Trump wins the Electoral College on election night. Joe Biden refuses to concede. He's already has 600 attorneys spread out around the country to immediately file emergency appeals and mail order. And all. over the next, the, the week to two weeks after the election, mysterious mail-in ballots will shift to Joe Biden. It will go to the Supreme Court. And we might not even know who the president-elect is by inauguration in January which in that case goes to the number three, which would be Nancy Pelosi, would be appointed acting president. Whether you agree or disagree with anything I just said, I'm telling you that everybody I talk to, every hedge fund manager, everybody on the face of the planet who trades this market is expecting that to happen. A market implosion. It's coming. Take a look at that, what happened yesterday, that we, had, we got Fed fatigue. Jerome Powell kind of told us we're going to have zero interest rates for the next three years. And the market shrugged and said, what else, what else you got, man? Give us a little bit more. This market, markets need certainty. So between now and election day, I will not be getting <clears throat> establishing those base positions in Amazon or XLY. I'm just taking like I did with this week. I did a tactical bear call spread on XLY. That's looking fantastic. Once we get some certainty out here, somebody concedes or the Supreme Court rules or something like that, then we can get in and the market will keep going up. But I just got done a live trade brief. Every Thursday morning at 10, I do a weekly debrief with my members. When we get a stimulus pop here, I'm going to sell into it. I'm going to go 70-30. I know I'm talking about solo Amazon, but I'm, I'm putting the ladder down to help you out because I do not want to see people get wiped out. 70% of my portfolio over the next couple of weeks, I will be moving into cash money. 30% of my portfolio, I will be buying volatility, buying long VIX calls, and I will be short the market by buying S&P 500 puts. I'm also going to add a little gold and silver. It's kind of smaller. Those are smaller. 70, 30. There is no Amazon on that screen, and there is no XLY. I'm telling you this is going to happen. You have been warned. It's a fact. Does anybody in this room, honest to God, believe that on election night, let's say Joe Biden wins, that Donald Trump at midnight on November 3rd walks to a microphone in the White House and says, ah, you know what? It was a good fight. Joe, you president-elect Biden, um, let's unite and bring the country. It's not going to happen. Does anybody think Joe Biden's going to go to a microphone on election night? So the next day, folks, be prepared. The best thing about being an options trader is, you know what, Wiz, I disagree with everything that you're saying. 
okay, then do the exact opposite of what I'm saying. If you think the market's going to go do that in November, God bless you and do the exact opposite of what I'm doing. That's what's great. I love being an options trader. If I listen to somebody, I'm like, I completely disagree with what they're saying. You can take a position in the market on that. But here's what's funny. Even if I'm wrong, peaceful transition of power. Oh, you, you won, Donald. I, I love you and love America. It's not going to happen. But anyway, even if, if it does, if I'm in 70-30, 70-30, and the market doesn't even blink and just keeps going up, I get back in. I will jump into my Amazon base position. I will jump into my XLY. I will do all of that stuff. So I miss a couple points to the upside. Oh, darn. <laughs> I'd rather do that than be in stuff and that happen. Yeah, good question. I absolutely would. Uh, if uh, I like being buying puts on the S and P 500, uh, but yeah, I mean Amazon's starting to break down here. Look at that run, though. Look at the COVID crash. Let's look at this. Look at here's COVID. January end of January, I predicted. Look at this. We had a great earnings. It ran up, and then here's its COVID correction, or or a little bit of a pullback, and then it never looked back. Why? Because we were all locked up ordering from Amazon. Folks, think about it. Amazon, uh, Amazon, uh, it, it, two years ago, they literally had a competition. They had like their best employee. It was like their best employee versus the, the HAL 5000. Their best employee could box 200 things in an hour. The HAL 5000 could do 700. You know what they did? They got rid of almost, you go look at an Amazon, so I've been to one in Miami. I've done consulting down there in Amazon Fulfillment Center. There's a lot of robots zipping around, folks. Robots don't complain. Robots don't need to go to the bathroom. They don't need to eat, and they can work 24-7. You know what they did with the many of the employees in those fulfillment centers? They said, oh, wait, oh, hold on. Go put an Amazon Prime sticker on the side of your car and go deliver packages for us. Okay, thanks. I'm, I'm glad to have a job. Here's my prediction. Two, maybe two years at most, you will not see a driver in the front seat of an Amazon truck. They will be driverless. The 18 wheelers will, the small ones will as well. You're gonna get a text on your phone that says your package is here. You're gonna go to the door or go down. You're gonna enter like a pin on the side of a vehicle and the slot will open up and you grab your package. That's gonna happen. Folks, pilots aren't needed anymore. Not too many people are going to jump on an airliner tomorrow that doesn't have two airline pilots in the front, but it's Airbus did that a, a month or two ago. The plane pushed back, taxied, took off, flew around, landed, pulled up to the gate and shut down without a pilot touching anything. Okay, so Amazon, folks, is on the forefront of all of this stuff. So it is going to get, it, it will not survive the drink implosion. It will not be unscathed. But guess what? Money, money never sleeps, pal. Some Wall Street, you know, the uh, whatever, the second Wall Street movie. So money will flow somewhere. Fund managers have to perform, right? Fund managers have to perform and money will go back into Amazon eventually. But uh, yeah, very long answer to your short question. Look at where we are right now. It's like this 2975 right there. Okay, we blew through it here. Little drill bit here little resistance there and we're 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 like the kid in the deep end right now with our legs trying to touch where where where's support here we're going to get a stimulus bounce and then a sell off i guarantee you okay uh yeah uh hey jenny uh novice question here when you say 70% cash do you mean you transfer 70% of your money out of your portfolio, and then you put it back in after Trump uh, wins. Ginny, 70% cash, I, I don't transfer it out of my portfolio. I just am not in any positions. Uh, the, the cash stays into my account. So, for example, right now, I'm long a lot of Microsoft shares and Apple shares, right? I'm going to, in the next week or two, hopefully, if we get a stimulus deal and they bounce, I'm going to sell my Apple and Microsoft shares and just hold on to that cash. Buy puts on the S&P 500 and buy VIX calls. Let's take a look at the VIX real quick. Uh, if you don't know what the VIX is, it's the volatility index, right? I call it the heart rate monitor. 
Take a look at, uh, oops, VIX, VIX. It's our heart rate monitor. You can go one year. So look at this. Little spikes mean something freaked the market out. When it's low, nothing's going on. Everything's great. Oh, a little freak out, a little freak out. And then there you go. There's February. We're all going to die of COVID. And then there's, no, we're not. Well, maybe we are. No, we're not. Maybe, uh, well, this was a little bit of a, a tech profit taking last week, right? But let's take a look at the three-month chart of the VIX, or actually six. Because after volatility came in, after the COVID crash, we had a little freak out. It is, the VIX is going to go through the roof. So. 70% cash. It's still in my portfolio. I just am not in. So, you know, 70% cash means I closed most of my bullish positions and those things are just, the cash is just sitting in my brokerage account. Then I buy long VIX calls and I buy puts on the S&P 500, SPX. That's what my portfolio is going to look like over the coming weeks. By October 1st, I want this to be going on. I predicted back here as this market was rallying. I, I, I came up with that acronym months ago, Democrats, Russia, Iran, North Korea, China. That's going to happen between, it already is happening between now and November uh, November 3rd, okay? And we're, we, this is not a bullish chart right here at all. Tech pullback, bounce, pull back to the 50-day moving average, bounce, pull back to the 50-day moving average. One more time, we will get a, a relief bounce, but everybody, I took folks, I do a call every morning and every afternoon or when, when I want to with it, it's a mastermind group, hedge fund managers, portfolio managers at most of the big Wall Street banks, family office folks, very rich dudes who just manage their own money. We have our group, uh, everybody is doing that. Everybody's waiting to play the stimulus pop, pop and drop, breaking news, Nancy, Chuck, Mitch and Trump, Agree to a 1.5 trillion stimulus bill. We ride that up and then get out, man. I had two or three guys from my mastermind group have are they're out. My buddy got out of everything here and he's in, in Telluride. He's he's like, dude, I'm not trading this this shit show coming up. Why would I? He's up like 40 percent year to date. He's like, I'm done, dude. A lot of people, portfolio managers and hedge funds, that miss the implosion who finally got the explosion are done. They're going to cash. I mean, if you're a hedge fund manager and you're up 40 something percent, 40, remember the term hedge fund means that you should be making money all the time, whether the market's exploding, imploding, or moving sideways. So most hedge funds, you know, three to 6% is a nice, if you got a lot of money in a hedge fund, that's a nice, you know, that's an old savings account, right? Now that interest rates are at zero, it doesn't matter. but this monster rally from the bottom, most people are saying, dude, I appreciate your acronym, your drink wall. Why? I, I don't want to fly over this thing. It's going to be bad. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, but me as an options trader, I want to trade that. I got to be honest. It's again, I wear two suits at Topkin Options, me and my flight suit. I don't want this to happen. I want to be wrong. I want you to email me or come to my trade brief on November 4th and go, dude, completely blew that one. You won't have to because I'll say it first. Did you hear what, uh, the, the Bob Woodward tapes with the President Trump in October? What was it? 2017? 18. October of 2007. One of those Octobers. I got something huge wrong, and I'm happy. Let's just say a lot of little birdies that I know said, dude, we're going to attack North Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, we had three CSGs, three carrier strike groups in the Pacific. Last time we had that much iron in the Pacific was Midway, I think. I knew the three commanding officers of the aircraft carriers and the three CAGs, commander of the air groups. Let's just say, uh, but here's why I bring up the Woodward tapes, because the president said that. He's, he told Bob Woodward, he's like, Bob, you have no idea how close we came to attacking North Korea. I do, but that September, October, I did the same thing. I went 70-30. And we were having a live event in Lake Tahoe uh, in November. And I told folks, I'm like, I'm getting out. I'm going to cash, volatility, and puts. It didn't happen. You know why it didn't happen? Because the president sent a picture from a Global Hawk drone 
with a bullseye on the guy's head. He's like, you know what? I was going to attack. I'm not going to 25 million people dead. I ain't doing that. I'm going to kill you. Mysteriously, the guy showed up at a peace conference. <laughs> no president had done that before. Like, no, 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 I'm not going to war with your country. I'm just going to kill you. Um, why am I rambling about that? Because that's a time where I was wrong and I, and I was happy. We went to Lake Tahoe. Everybody got a bottle of Camus because I was wrong. But I, 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 I am not going to be wrong on this one. I want to be, but I'm not. Okay. Uh, I, I only have about five. Let me ask a couple more uh, questions. Uh, Ginny, but if everyone does that, doesn't that create chaos in the market? Yes. So if everybody starts stampeding to the doors here, it makes it even worse. So you want to be early rather than later, right? You, you, we're, this market, let me leave you with this. This market right now, we're playing musical chairs in the market. You want to have a seat. Take a seat earlier. I call it a popcorn moment. Right now would be a good time to take whatever profits you got uh, and, and grab a big bucket of popcorn and watch this election and what the market does. Okay? That's the, the safest thing to do right now. I am not going to sit here and tell you to get into a bunch of stuff except cash, puts, and, and calls. Okay. Uh, Trung, why buy VIX calls and puts on the S&P 500? Why not just double up on the VIX calls or just puts on the S&P? No, because um, Trung, 80% uh, of the time when the market goes down, the VIX goes up. That means 20% of the time that doesn't happen. You'll hear me say in my live trade briefs, because there are some days when the, you ready for this? Write it down. Market up, VIX up, something is up. There are days, folks, when the market is going up and the VIX is up. What does that mean? I call that a hold your nose rally. That means people aren't believing it. It's like, okay, um, we're, we're kind of going up right now, but I don't believe it. Okay. So it, they are not, they don't, they aren't the same thing, being long volatility and, and long puts. Sometimes they're completely not. So 80% of the time they are, and it's a safe bet, but not me, man. I deploy multiple ships instead of uh, targeting all in one. Um, hey, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, since uh, I'm actually going to open up the doors uh, to my, I, I don't ask for a trial. I don't say I don't ask for any money, anything. From September 27th to September 30th, that's coming up. It's going to start on a Sunday night. It's called full throttle and it's going to end on Wednesday. I'm going to do four free briefs, folks. Learn how to profit on the election market implosion and volatility explosion. Okay. So I'm not going to, I'm not even going to push solo Amazon service right now because technically we're going to be not doing that much solo Amazon right now. So let me post that in the chat box um, to, uh, to you guys just register for my free training. I'm not going to ask for a dime. It's funny because some of my, my compatriots in this industry, when we used to go to live events, they'd be giving me grief. Like, dude, why I, I charge for that. I'm like, well, that's you. I'm actually going to give you two free uh, I'll give you my seven-step trade plan that I charge 55 bucks for and a copy of my OPCL, the options pocket checklist. So I'm not I'm not selling you anything today. I'm telling you to come to my uh, the market's going to implode, ball's going to explode uh, briefs coming up. It starts, yeah, good question. It starts on a Sunday night because I give you uh, my, 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 my trade plan. I have a seven-step trade plan that I use in my live trade briefs. And then the rest of the, that week, Monday through uh, the 28th through the 30th, you're going to be invited to attend uh, my free live trade brief. So head to go.topgunoptions.com slash FT. FT stands for full throttle. And you can come and register for all these briefs uh, for free. And I'll actually throw you a couple of uh, gifts. Good questions, folks. It, it shows that you you kind of you kind of know that there's a train wreck coming, man. Like I said, you want to be early rather than late uh, on leaving. If you remember the COVID crash, man, it did this. It was violent. Remember, markets go down a hell of a lot faster than they go up. Look at that last week, down. And we're kind of grinding here, okay? Markets go down a hell of a lot. Uh, Krung, how low do you think the market will go? That's a great question. Why don't you come to these briefs 
and you will find out. Okay, I want to keep Anna on time. It's 1145 on the East Coast of the United States of America. I am always on time and on target, so I'm going to throw it back to Anna. Thanks for having me again, Anna. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Uh, make sure you hedge, folks, and God bless. I'll see you next time. I am John Thomas, the mad hedge fund trader. And let me show my screen. Now, that's my ugly mug. And what Matt Buckley failed to tell you in the last presentation is that it was my event at Lake Tahoe uh, he was uh, presenting at. And I think we drank all the Camus uh, that we had there at that time. So uh, that was a lot of fun. And I uh, look forward to doing it again as soon as the pandemic is over. Today, I'm gonna to talk about my emergency strategy webinar because there are some major, major things about to hit in the world, which you can take advantage of and make a lot of money out. But before you decide if you should listen to me, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, why listen to me? Well, I have 50 years of experience in the global financial markets, 10 years as the Economist magazine correspondent in Tokyo, and later the White House under Ronald Reagan, spent 10 years running the International Equity Division at Morgan Stanley. I think the stock is up 100 times from my cost. A uh, little time out as a Marine Corps combat pilot, Desert Storm, only got shot down once, still set off metal detectors as a result. 10 years running the first international dedicated hedge fund, five years fracking for natural gas in Texas, and I still have oil under my fingernails from that little enterprise and now 13 years publishing the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader. I am one of a handful of founders of the modern hedge fund industry who is uh, still working, still breathing for that matter. Uh, my family origins are very humble. I grew up as the oldest of seven children on a remote farm in Southern California. That's when we grew dates and oranges. I lived the all-American childhood playing Little League Baseball and becoming an Eagle Scout. By the way, my daughter is about to become the first ever girl Eagle Scout, now that the Boy Scouts allow girls in. Uh, wasn't much to do in the old days in California except hunting, so I picked up a job as paper boy uh, for the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. Uh, one of the first papers I delivered covered the Kennedy assassination in 1963. I found the stock pages, bought IBM at 20 and sold it at 30, and suddenly found a far better way to make money than delivering newspapers on the back of a bicycle. By the time I was 16, I'd earned enough money to fly to Europe, and that's when it cost a fortune to fly to Europe. Uh, by the age of 17, I would uh, visited more than 50 countries and spoke four languages. That's me hitchhiking in France, notice no cars. The French were too poor to own cars in those days. At uh, UCLA, I majored in math and DNA research, a little sideline in virology, which has come in handy lately. Uh, that landed me a job at the nuclear test site in Nevada. Their yield didn't mean interest paid, but millions killed. Uh, I didn't see much of a future in that, so the government sent me to Southeast Asia uh, for a few years of intelligence missions where I learned to fly and jump out of perfectly good airplanes. There I advised the uh, mil uh, militaries of Americans, Asian allies. I also spent a lot of time consulting with the Biowarfare Department of the U.S. Army, which also recently has proved extremely valuable. As the war wound down, I became a correspondent for The Economist magazine in London. When they learned I had a math degree, they switched me over to covering the Asian economy and the stock market. Ta-da! By the way, doing research in those days meant carrying a 45 caliber Sten gun, which weighed a ton and used to reliably jam on every six shot. Uh, I th sometimes I think I suffered more damage than the enemy. Uh, the end of my uh, years of military service got me a box full of medals, which I drag out once a year on, or actually twice a year, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Uh, as a foreign correspondent, I covered China during the Cultural Revolution and got to meet Mao, Cho and Lai, all the heavies of the day. Was the first American reporter to visit North Korea since the Korean War and covered the continent all the way to India. And I can't tell you how many times I got deli belly. That's why I'm so skinny in these pictures. I figured out very quickly you didn't have to be that smart to make money in the stock market. 
So I figured, so I got into the industry joining Morgan Stanley. After 10 years, I started my own hedge fund. And that's a picture of me my first year at Morgan. And I know you're thinking, boy, the years have been cruel. And so they have been. Uh, I rapidly became the top hedge fund manager of the 1990s, uh, bringing in a 1,000% return in a decade. I, then the money really started to pour in. It's an understatement to say that when your income goes from the thousands to the tens of millions, it really has a big impact on your lifestyle. You get to do things like fly your own plane around Europe, go marlin fishing, collect vintage Rolls Royces. That's my entry at the Pebble Beach car show and buy the latest hot Tesla. Uh, uh, of course, the other reason to follow us is that we have had spectacular results in the hedge fund business. I sold my hedge fund, retired to go into oil and gas. After making a killing there, I missed the stock market and started the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader in 2008. I now spend my days pursuing my first love, finding winning trade alerts. But now I do it from my three mansions in San Francisco, Lake Tahoe, and Zermatt, Switzerland. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to visit the one in Switzerland this year because Americans there are banned. We're too infectious. I've quit turning millionaires into billionaires. There is far more satisfaction leveling the playing field for the average guy and teaching them how to trade, and that includes you. If I can take a $50,000 account and turn it into $500,000, that is more job satisfaction than I could ever get anywhere else. However, every silver lining has a cloud. Here's my uh, tax return from last year, and it shows I owed $5,744,000 on $15 million .5 in trading income. I just thank God I can uh, pay that amount of tax and uh, not have it put a dent in my lifestyle. In the little time I have uh, left, I pursue my other love, flying vintage aircraft on weekends. If you see an old plane flying loops over San Francisco or London these days, it's probably me. That's my 1932 de Havilland Tiger Moth. Notice the design flaws, gas tank right over your head and no brakes. That's why we can only land on grass. You just coast and hope for the best. Uh, of course, the ultimate luxury is to give those who need it. As a Marine Corps veteran, I volunteer for grief counseling for widows and orphans, and I'm a major donor to wounded warriors. When the wildfires hit in California, I visited the main evacuation centers and handed out $10,000 worth of Target gift cards. And that's something I had to do now for three years in a row. Uh, this is me over at my in-laws' home. Uh, notice the sort tray here. They were looking for a wedding ring, which they eventually found because it was made out of platinum and has a very high melting point. But the wheels on the cars did melt completely into liquid. Uh, so what is the smart money doing now? Uh, it's using capitulation down days to buy high quality stocks, selling short US Treasury bonds, hedging out downside market risk with put options, defensive sectors like banks and bear ETFs. And we're also buying gold on dips for another run at the highs. Uh, there is a method to my madness. The Fed has proven its intention to step in and run the printing presses on any 10% market correction, which we've just had. Stocks are still overpriced, just short of all-time highs. A bond short is far and away the better trade based on massive over-issuance of US government bonds and the collapsing US dollars. And we now have a decent rally to sell into. The big fear remains of a larger corona spike now with a second bigger one in the fall. Gold is breaking out to the upside from hedging demand. U.S. dollar is toast because of exploding deficits on a weak dollar. Uh, best buying opportunity of the decade is setting up. The next big dip is the one you buy. And uh, if you're looking, uh, if you're wondering why I'm so happy in that picture, it's because I'm flying a P-51 Mustang. And if you don't know what that is, uh, that is my friend Geraldine, who I fly uh, a couple of times a year in Florida. It's kind of like a combination between a jet plane and a piston plane with a 2,000 horsepower engine. It will kill you, though, if you don't know how to fly it. I've had a couple of close calls. Uh, global economy is shifting from a V to a W. Recovery is shifting 
uh, with GDP down 26% in uh, Q2. That is the worst quarter in U.S. economic history. Unemployment rate is about to soar as the PPP and state unemployment money runs out. 30 million home evictions are imminent. The Great Depression deepens with 56 new million new unemployed since March. Some 20% of these jobs are never coming back, even after the economy recovers. Fed has promised no interest rate rise until 2023. That's where the free Fed put kicks in. Uh, will the next $3 trillion stimulus package uh, go straight into the market? Absolutely yes, and you know what that means for stock prices. Uh, just to show you how grim the economy is, uh, this is the current U.S. Uh, hotel occupancy rate. It's a little bit below 50%. Here is uh, U.S. Re restaurant bookings. Those are down 60% from their peak. And we have uh, weekly jobless claims uh, with a peak that far and away surpassed what we saw in the depths of the Great Depression in the 1930s. Notice that these business levels are at ruinous levels. These businesses can't stay in business uh, with occupancies and demand that low. The overhead is just uh, beating them to death. Paying rent every month with 50% of uh, normal customers never works. Uh, these are all businesses that needed 90, 95% occupancy to just break even. Uh, of course, we uh, after the historic pandemic, we have the historic antidote. Uh, government has already implemented the greatest economic stimulus in history at six trillion. More is in the pipeline. The Fed has unleashed the greatest QE in history at eight trillion. That's quantitative easing, increasing all the global QE of the past decade by 50% in one shot. When people come out of lockdown, they will engage in the greatest spending binge in history igniting the next roaring 20s. Uh, most consumption hasn't been lost, just deferred. I'm sure all of you are dying to take a vacation as soon as it's safe to get on a plane or a ship. This will create the strongest economic growth in history and will last for a year. Stocks will rocket. Don't sell anything now. Most of the damage has already been done. You're only looking at buying opportunities from here. Uh, stocks, uh, the monster rally in big tech is the, where the action remains, with Apple hitting a new high at 437. Option trading August was up an historic 120%, with half of the trading taking place in options with only two weeks to ex uh, expiration. That is the highest level of short dated options in history. Big short squeeze put in a classic short term market top with small lot retail buying as a turbocharger. Those are the famed Robin Hood traders. Reopening sectors took the biggest dive like airlines, casinos, cruise lines, and then bounced back. The future is in disruptive growth tech stocks like the cloud, robotics, gene editing, alternative energy, and blockchain. Banks are the next rotation trade offering the best value in the market. We could be entering a wide 3,000 to 3,600 range in the S&P 500 until the election. That means more downside. Uh, this is where we are now. Uh, this is a 30-year history of the S&P 500 multiple. We're all the way up here. So if you hear about the market being expensive, overpriced, and la la land, this is what they're talking about. We're at a 25 times multiple. We got all the way down to nine in the 08 crash. And notice uh, in March, we never really got down uh, very cheaply. We only got down to about a 14 multiple at the March lows. Uh, so these are some of my forecasts for markets going forward. And um, uh, I'll tell you what these blue boxes mean in a minute. But I see a market chopping sideways, possibly testing the 200 day moving average. Uh, we're about here right now. Uh, we keep chopping along to election day. And then no matter who wins, Trump or Biden, the market will rock at least 1,000 points on the first day because the election is over and the uncertainty is gone. And that is worth a lot to stock traders. By the way, this shows some of the recent trades that we've done in the options market uh, in this particular security. 
Uh, NASDAQ, uh, and now I'll tell you what these are. We have our own in-house proprietary algorithm. These are the sell, buy and sell signals that we get from that algorithm. I'll talk to you more about that later. But we you know, bought the March lows, of course, like everybody did, uh, sold the recent high, and we're looking for one more sell-off to get back in to buy on the long side, and then we see new all-time highs, 13,000 the NASDAQ by year end. Uh, Microsoft looking for $300 there, and pretty much all these charts are identical now because all the money is going into the same sectors. We got to buy at the March lows, all-time high, uh, took profits, uh, looking to buy the next sell-off in Microsoft. Uh, Apple, of course, uh, my uh, long-term adjusted average price in Apple now is about 25 cents a share. I bought right after they almost went bankrupt in 1998. So 100% of my position is capital gain. But from a trading point of view, uh, in in March, uh, out in August, looking at one more sell-off. If we got all the way down to the 200-day moving average, uh, you really want to lo load the boat at $83 because uh, we're targeting 500 on the old split adjusted price. Uh, uh, with the four to one, that would be over 150 uh, with the new shares. Uh, Amazon think there's another double. It's the first $2 trillion company. We think it could double again. I used to work with Jeff Bezos at Morgan Stanley when he was in our research department. And again, we've been buying this since it was $10 in the uh, 1990s. Took a short-term profit. Uh, have an options trade that expires tomorrow at its maximum profit point, looking to buy one more dip, and then bang, we're targeting 5,000. Uh, PayPal, uh, we love touchless payments. We think huge part of the economy is moving over there. PayPal is a front runner along with Square. And again, bought March, sold the recent peak, and looking to get back in on the next decent dip, targeting 250. Uh, NVIDIA, we, uh, this is our latest 10-bagger. We got into this at 60 uh, about four years ago. It uh, almost went up to $600. So 10-baggers uh, are what we are looking for. And of course, based in Silicon Valley, we're kind of spoiled for choice for 10-baggers. So uh, sold the recent peak in that. And again, uh, uh, you know, dropped 100 points, looking to buy the dip, targeting 600 in NVIDIA. Salesforce, uh, you know, the net effect of the pandemic was to, for the entire world to rush to the cloud. Guess who's in charge of cloud management? That's Salesforce. So spectacular earnings growth, uh, and we're targeting 300 by the end of the year. Uh, Boeing, uh, another story, a non-tech stock. Uh, been beaten like a redheaded stepchild now for three years because of the 737 NAX. Uh, what, what happens is they eventually uh, get recertified and the uh, airlines recover. So if you can buy it at anywhere from $100 to $120 a share, then you could eventually get back to $300 in a recovery. Don't rush into this one. You really only want to buy this on a major meltdown. Uh, JP Morgan, we think, is the next big rotation play. Uh, it is the quality value play in the market. And when people get sick of chasing uh, tech stocks, they go back and load up on a little bit more of banking stocks. So our in-house algorithm got us a buy here, took profits here, bought it again here. We're currently long, and if we get another dip, we'll buy some more. We're targeting $130 in JP Morgan. Uh, Visa, similar sort of deal, another touchless stock, um, took profits, looking to get back in on the next dip, uh, so there's another recovery play here. I bet you didn't know that 8% of all credit card transactions are to buy airline tickets. So when travel returns next year, planes start flying again, the credit card companies are going to take off like a rocket. Uh, bonds are, have been absolutely going nowhere for the last couple of months. Uh, we've been trading this both on the long and the short side all year. Since Governor Jay Powell promised to run the economy hot weeks ago, the 10-year Treasury bond uh, yield has only e e got a paltry rise from 60 to 72 basis points. China has started to dump their $1 trillion 
in U.S. Treasury bond in response to Trump's escalating trade war, already put up $200 billion uh, for sale. Uh, the fact that the market is handling this paper with no major moves is amazing. Uh, rotation of domestic recovery stocks will bring another big bond sell-off. Another short-selling opportunity of the century is in play once corona cases peak out again. U.S. Treasury bond fund, the TLT, could plunge from 180 high in the spring all the way down to 105 in two years, taking in uh, 10 year treasury uh, yields from 31 basis points all the way back up to 3.25%. So you wanna be selling every rally in the TLT. Uh, he, here's the TLT and some of our recent trading. Went uh, short up here, went long down here, short here, long here. Uh, we have options that expire tomorrow. Uh, on the next rally, we're going to sell it one more time. Eventually, we're looking for 140 and then 105. Uh, okay, here is the yield on the 10 year treasury. And we've been kind of bouncing around here in a literally a 10 basis point range for months. But we eventually, eventually think the breakout is to 125. You can make a ton of money. And we've been running triple weightings in these positions here selling these peaks, selling this peak, selling this peak. So uh, it's like having a rich uncle that writes a check for you once a month. Uh, foreign currencies, we also trade. Uh, US dollar has been plunging all year. Massive QE and bond issuance is sucking the life out of the greenback. Euro broke to multi-year highs as there are now more corona deaths per day in Florida than all of Europe. That allowed Europe to open while we stayed closed. British pound soared on a European recovery. Bitcoin jumped to a four month high on the dollar collapse. Aussie dollar jumped to an 18 month high. Keep selling short all US dollar rallies. Its yield support is gone forever. Uh, here is the UUP, which is a basket of all of the above currencies. We've been going short here. We've been going short here. Uh, dollars trying to bounce around, find a bottom. I bet we get a little rally yet going into the election on a flight to safety bid, and then it's bombs away to new lows. So great short selling opportunity setting up for the US dollar. Uh, Aussie dollar is our number one pick on foreign currencies. Uh, it's already rallied from 57 to 72. And I put the 15 year chart up here uh, just to show you that what we actually got here was a double bottom, an 11 year double bottom. Uh, Cause if you adjust for interest rate differentials, the Aussie dollar actually made it down to the 50 level uh, down here. So the next move is 50 to one to one. Over the next three years, that is a potential double in the currency in three years. If you are an Australian viewer, uh, delay paying for all your foreign vacations. They are about to get a lot cheaper. Uh, energy is a horrible sector. We don't want to have anything to do with. And I say this having worked in the industry for six years. Gold demand to be 10 million barrels a year less in 2020, uh, going down from 100 million barrels a day to 90 million barrels a day. We dropped 15% last week. You may notice that when you commute from upstairs to downstairs to work, you're not using a lot of gasoline. And in fact, we have a 100% solar house here. So. Uh, Saudi liquidation of all of their assets does not bode well for uh, oil's long term. It means the Saudi royal family is getting ready to flee the country as oil goes to zero. Virus spike in industry suddenly cutting into oil demand again. Much of the lost demand is permanent as the U.S. economy restructures to a less transportation oriented economy. Russia has lost 50 percent of its budget at $37 a barrel, they're so dependent on oil, triggering an economic disaster there. Avoid all energy plays like the plague, could drop by half in the coming uh, recession or depression. Uh, don't confuse gone down a lot with cheap. Here's oil and uh, we've been bearish on oil really since 2011 when it hit $150 a barrel. So we've been playing on the short side, selling here, selling here, selling here, and we're eventually targeting another revisit uh, to ten dollars a barrel. In uh, 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 in January, I did a global tour 
Oil was then at $70 a barrel. I predicted it would hit 10 uh, in 10 years. Uh, and in fact, it hit negative 37 in, th in uh, three months. So they probably think I'm a complete idiot you know, about oil and know nothing. Uh, it really was an unbelievable collapse. Problem with uh, falling markets, nobody wants to own oil on the downside because you have to pay to store it. So it's uh, everyone is trying to pass the hot potato to the next guy in a hurry, and that's how we got negative oil prices in the spring. Uh, here's the 20-year chart, and you can see we've actually been in a downtrend since 2009, the beginning of 2009. And again, I see the $10 price coming back again. Uh, precious metals, we're shooting for new all-time highs. Portfolio hedging demand piles on top of central bank buying, creating a big gold shortage or even shortages of coins. Uh, new QE infinity has sparked a huge rally. Collapsing buck is another incentive. Central banks pouring gold into every month. Coin dealers are running out of gold American eagles and buy every dip. Uh, that's me Christmas shopping in the Istanbul uh, gold market. I do tend to get around a lot. Uh, so here's our gold chart. Uh, we've been buying every dip since 2016, buy, buy, buy. And we're still looking to buy a dip. Our last sell was back here uh, in 2013. Uh, same with the gold miners. If you love gold, you've got to love gold miners because they have four times the upside leverage. Uh, and if you love gold miners, you have to love Barrick Gold, the world's largest gold miner. Uh, there is another alternative investment opportunity, and that would be Tesla. They'll be the next trillion dollar company. Uh, batteries have dropped by 80% over the last 10 years and will fall by another 80% over the next 10 or two years if solid state batteries can be mass produced, which they should. More factories under construction. The data is worth more than the car. Uh, US electric cars have soared from 0% 10 years to 4% of the market today and will be eventually. Tesla's already outselling all premium car brands combined, including Mercedes, BMW, and Audi. Uh, most US states and countries have banned the internal in inter combustion engine by 2030 or 2040. Tesla is already the world's largest car company with a market cap at 450 billion at its peak, could grow another five times from here. Uh, we originally have meant, uh, recommended the stock at $16.50. That is a 150 times move to the top. Our last buy was at 180 and then again at 360. So this has been a huge winner for us. Buy the stock, you get the car for free because you can afford it. Uh, this is my most recent Tesla, the 162,000 uh, with ludicrous mode. Uh, this is my first Tesla that I bought 12 years ago, totaled by a GM Silverado pickup truck. Here you can see the battery in the back seat and the carbon fiber wheel wells. Uh, don't play with matches. You could probably just do okay buying all the stocks I mentioned above and forgetting about them. Uh, the, they are, uh, however, the reality is that conditions for these companies change every day. They're all viciously competing, try to put each other out of business. If you don't get daily updates on the fundamentals, you could easily get wiped out. Today's big winner could instantly become tomorrow's loser. That's why you need someone like me to guide you through the market to avoid an out of the blue blow up. I gained financial independence for life and so can you. All of this can be yours. Discover how to make thousands of dollars a year in extra income. Go from complete beginner to seasoned pro in weeks. Learn how to quit your day job and trade for a living full time. Trade from anywhere, anytime. Supplement your retirement income with the satisfaction of booking winning trades by the hundreds. And that's me sending out a trade alert from North Africa. Notice I'm struggling to smile there as it is 120 degrees. The harsh truth is you really need my help. The majority of individual traders lose money. They lack the correct training and discipline to succeed. Most broker research suffers from grievous conflicts of interest. Wall Street is all about moving money from the uneducated to the educated. An easy solution to that is to get educated. Fidelity did a 20 year study and uh, learned that their top performing investors were dead people. Why are dead people such good traders? Because they never sell.
Uh, you need a real pro to guide you through the market maze. Market is not monolithic and 95% of it can be completely ignored. You can earn a 10X return on the great ones, but get wiped out by the losers. Let a 50 year veteran steer you to safe waters. Let me sit next to you and guide your hand on every winning trade. This is our market timing index, an artificial driven algorithm that analyzes 30 different economic, technical and momentum driven indicators uh, 30 times a day. Why do you need an algorithm? Uh, they have become so dominant in the market, you should never trade without one. It does the work of a seasoned 100 man research department in seconds, runs real time, and optimizes with the addition of every new data point far faster than any human can. Major in a trading strategy to upgrade itself 30 times a day. Don't go to a gunfight with a knife. If you're trading against algos alone, you will lose. Algorithms provide you with a defined systematic trading discipline that will enhance your profits. And I'm not the only one uh, using algorithms. Some 80 to 90% of all current trading is algo driven. Uh, this is a three year history of our algos and notice that you get plenty of sell and buy opportunities, enough for many round trips a year. Uh, over the three last, uh, uh, let's see, this goes back over the last 11 years, the S&P 500 gained uh, over 160%. We uh, earned 3.6 times the SPX with far less volatility, annual, annualizing 36.41%. So notice we always make money in all market conditions, whether markets go up, down, or sideways, and we are at an all-time high as we speak. Uh, Several of our traders have made fortunes. Bill was a farmer who made 3.4 million and then retired, now grows grapes in Napa Valley. Uh, Philip was an oil uh, roustabout and the oil and gas industry in tax. He now makes a full-time living trading, uh, trades whenever or wherever he wants. Jackie was an Australian hospital administrator who turned $50,000 into 2 million with my help and became a major technology player. Uh, she's retired and was spending her time cruising around the world until they all got grounded. So what do we do about all this? Well, stocks, you want to buy the next dip. Bonds, you want to sell rallies. Commodities, buy dips. Energy, stand aside. Currency, sell U.S. dollar rallies. Precious metals, buy dips. If you're not up 58.13% the past 12 months as I was, you are reading the wrong newsletter or following the wrong trade mentoring service. 58.13% in the last 12 months. You make that kind of return, you get to do things like take the Queen Mary from New York to London, then ride the Orient Express to Venice, then uh, hire your own private uh, helicopter to tour the Venetian islands. The very long view is where the really big money will be made. The 2000s and the 2010s were the hard decades for making monies. The 2020s and 2030s will be the easy ones as the global demographic wave brings on a new golden age. That will create an economic boom that will last another decade starting in 2021. Uh, Dow average went up 20 times in 19, from 1982 to 2000. Are you ready for a replay? Uh, if we get the same kind of performance we did last time, that'll take us to a Dow 120,000 by 2027. And if you think I'm crazy, We've already made half the move going from uh, 6,000 to 29,000 uh, since the 09 uh, bottom. Uh, one more fourfold gain, and that gets us up to 120,000. Except this time it's different. We have a major tech turbocharger uh, accelerating uh, profits on all fronts. Uh, this is a quantum computer on the right which will bring a trillion fold increase in performance uh, at no additional cost. Uh, so who will show you how to play the next 95,000 Dow points Sit with me, John Thomas, the mad hedge fund trader and my global trading dispatch. Discover how you can tap into the top performing trade mentoring service in the industry up 58.13% in a year. Uh, let a marine combat pilot st steer you to single stocks, options, and ETFs for global equities, bonds, foreign exchange, energy, commodities, precious metals, and real estate. 
Uh, this is a typical month for us. Uh, we are profitable 90% of the time. Uh, these are all long or shorts. Just a matter of time for tech and biotech break out to new all-time highs. Get ready to start reeling in those whoppers with global trading dispatch. Uh, here's how it works. When we see an opportunity, we send out a trade alert, as we did here in Micron Technology. This is what the trade alert looks like. It says buy Micron at 4201 or best, uh, and all the details you need. What happened? Micron shot up 15% in a couple of weeks. We sent out another alert. It says take profits. In this particular trade, we made $1,563 on a $10,000 investment in just a few weeks. Uh, these are some of our big winners. NVIDIA, almost up 10 times since we first recommended. LAM Research, up 77% uh, in 10 months. Baidu, up 2,240%. Uh, with my Global Trading Dispatch Service, you get a daily research newsletter, instant trade alerts set out at market sweet spots, about two or 300 a year live bi-weekly strategy webinars like this one with an interactive Q&A, special reports on urgent investment topics, uh, more educational videos and webinars than you can access in a lifetime. Uh, this is what I'm not going to charge you for this service. I'm not going to charge you $100,000. That's what I charge my hedge fund clients, and they're happy to pay it because I make them millions of dollars, and in fact, I use their payments to subsidize a, an affordable service for you. And I'm not gonna charge you $10,000 a year. That's what I charge my concierge clients who get my personal cell phone number. And I'm not gonna charge you $5,000. This is what I charge my advanced option trading clients. And I'm not even gonna charge you $3,000, the cheapest price on my website. Uh, this is the real deal. Creating this product cost me millions of dollars with the best customer service in the industry running it cost me millions more. Uh, here's the offer you can't refuse. Uh, one year for just nine, $997. That's a 33% discount uh, to the one year price on the website. Uh, it's a limited time offer. I can take only 25 new subscribers at a time. First come, first serve. I can't wake you make you uh can't wait to make you a tougher trader and um you should be seeing a link in the chat box on the right with a link to the sales page which you can only obtain through this webinar so um if you uh, can go ahead and post that link uh on the right uh that will give you access to this offer Uh, let me make the money for you to pay for your own subscription. You make the trades. Uh, discover how an experienced hedge fund manager finds and exploits the best sweet spots uh, in any market. Uh, here's the offer you can't refuse one year for just $997. Let me show you how to make the money to play for your own subscription. Just click on the link on the chat box on the right. And uh, da, 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 and I see we have a million questions in here. And let's take a look at the chat box. And there is the link, uh, www.madhedgefundtrader.com with some more code. Uh, and I see some of you have found the link uh, because we just have had a ton of orders to go through. Um, let's see, buy now and you receive my Mad Hedge Armageddon portfolio. Stocks to buy at the market bottom, then forget about for the rest of your life. Uh, buy now and you will instant receive a trade alert with an extremely high probability of success that uh, you can execute right now, uh, even while this webinar is going on because the market's open. Make money, some of the most serious money in your life. Don't leave good money on the table. 90% uh, of these trade alerts make money, most of them immediately. Uh, okay, so, okay, one year for just $997. Uh, click on the chat on the right, and let me see who has come through here. We have a uh, bill from Sarasota Springs, Florida, has just come in. It says, new subscriber. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, look forward to working with you. 
We have Joseph from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Um, and uh, these are coming in faster than I can read. Looks like we're gonna hit our 25 limit in a few seconds. Um, okay, I can see Yeah, we basically had 25 orders or more hit our store at the same time. Some of you are getting uh, unable to fulfill messages. So just if you did want to subscribe in that first batch, you can always send us an email at support at madhedgefundtrader.com. Okay, we have Robert uh, just came in from San Diego, California. Uh, let's see, there's a lot more here. We have uh, David from Tacoma, Washington. Uh, thank you uh, very much, David. I promise I will be earning our money. Okay, let me wait for a few more coming. Let me answer some quick, quick questions here. Um, yeah, because uh, the uh, the webinar says one year and the you know the sales page says six months. I'm going to honor the webinar and give it to you for a year. So don't worry about the time. Looks like there was a typo on the sales page. I'm going to offer you one year. But believe me, this is the only time you will ever get that offer, uh, for sure. Um, okay, yeah, we've got quite a few people in the store right now. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm in agreement with everything you are uh, presenting. You have great insights. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Just reading through these questions. Uh, I can see you're a man of distinct character and more in ethics. Thank you very much. How low do you think the market will go? Well, we've already done a 10% pullback. We could hit 20. Watch the 200-day moving averages on everything. That includes indexes and uh, single stocks. Um, and uh, uh, if we get a piece of bad news on the economy or the election, we could be hitting those 200 days across the board. Uh, okay. Okay, um, let's see, let me get this open here. Uh, ba -ba. Good morning from smoky Seattle. <laughs> uh, Riz is saying, I uh, love all the stocks that you've recommended. Okay, and um, uh, here's another good question. Are your trade alerts primarily for options or do, can we also do stocks and ETFs? Uh, every trade alert we send out uh, has uh, recommendations for both single stocks, ETFs, uh, or options. So we give every trade alert has three choices, which each one of you can do. Uh, that way, uh, you have a uh, opportunity to trade according to your own experience and risk tolerance. Okay, let me open some more of these uh, orders that have come through. We have. James from Norman, Oklahoma. Thank you, James. We have uh, Bogdan from, uh, I can't even tell what the country is. So I'll just leave that one. Okay, we have uh, Lewis from Elmira, Elmira, Ontario in Canada. We have, um, Gerald in Henderson, Nevada. Oh boy, it's uh, in my one of my old neighborhoods. I used to keep a plane in Henderson so I could go do tours over the Grand Canyon. Uh, we have, and it looks like we're gonna hit our 25 limit within the next second. So if you have any interest, even the slightest interest, if you're on the fence, go ahead, click on that link uh, in the chat box and uh, put in your order. We have uh, Chitladine from Bellevue, Iowa. We have uh, Richard from Lake Forest, Illinois. I know very well, right next to Winnetka, where I have a lot of friends. And we have Greeley from Lexington, North Carolina. Thank you, Greeley. And uh, you will be getting value for money beyond your wildest imagination. And we have Gary from Hudson, Ohio. Gary, thank you very much for coming in and watching our webinar. I will make it worth your while. Okay, let's see if any more questions. Uh, okay, 
Uh, well, I think I am out of time. So thank you very much for joining me today. This is John Thomas, the Mad Hedge Fund Trader, signing off for today. Good luck and good trading. My name is Michael Baltos from orderflows.com. And you know, today I'm gonna to be talking about order flow strategies for today's trading environment. You know, it's uh it's been a very interesting year. You know, the market's been all over the place. You know, even um, you know, today we're down about what up one and a half percent. And you know, there was a very interesting presentation by John on the last presentation. You know, he has a more macro view. I have a more short-term view, intraday trading. You know, there are so many ways to approach the market, right? There's no right or wrong way to take money out of the market. You know, like I said, there's literally probably thousands of different ways to make money in the market. And your job as a trader is to go in and take that money in, take that money out rather, day in and day out. So if I have your permission, you know, I'd love to share what works for me. And that's order flow analysis. So, you know, for those of you that are new to order flow and, and new to who I am, you know, just a brief background of my trading experience. So this is real time trading experience. You know, I've started on the CME floor as a runner with Dean Ritter Reynolds. That was in the early 1990s. Eventually, as I saw the exchange offering different forms of electronic trading, you know, CME had Globex, CBOT had Project Day, NYMEX had Access. I realized, you know, that's probably going to be the future of trading. And I left the floor to work on the off the floor trading desk where I would be trading electronically uh, for the firm, and I spent a few years trading electronically with Dean Witter. After that, I joined another company, EDF Man, the big English trading company. I spent two years there as a global macro trader. Um, then I left to join Commerce Bank, where I spent three years as a Eurex trader, a licensed Eurex trader, trading buns, bobbles, shats against uh, the U.S. products. You know, the 10 years, um, the five years, uh, and the S&Ps. Then, you know, after September 11th, I needed a break. I, you know, I lost some friends in the attacks and, you know, I took about six months off and basically just chilled out, you know, I did some traveling and eventually when I said, you know, I got to get, you know, I, I, I missed the markets. I, I want to start trading. I joined this company called Cargill. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Cargill, it's one of the largest companies in the world. It's a privately held company, but it's a big commodity trading company. I joined their uh, trading desk in Chicago and eventually they sent me out to Singapore to set up a trading desk when the exchange in Singapore decided to go electronic. I spent four years there. And after that, I joined JP Morgan. I, I was the vice president of futures trading. I spent eight years there and it got to the point where I was just really tired of the whole go, getting it in the morning, going to the office, spending more time in the office than in the house. and you know, after my daughter was born, I was like, you know, this is ridiculous. My daughter was just born, but I don't have any time for her. So I left. I left JP Morgan in 2013. And you know, my my thing was, you know, I was 43 at the time. I said, you know, that there's more to life than, you know, working in a corporate environment. You know, I said, I know how to trade. I'm going to just trade for myself. So I started writing a book on trading with the order flow, which is what I used, you know, throughout my trading career. And then as I was writing my book, you know, I was still trading for myself and the software that I was using to analyze the order flow, you know, I realized it could do so much more. So I started this company called orderflows.com, which is my software company. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. But, you know, the book that I wrote is a 150 page book. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you how you can get a copy of my book for free. You know, it's it's a very interesting book. You know, a lot of people tell me, you know, it's, it's made a big difference in their trading. And I'll give you um, a link where you can go and uh, download the book for free. Now, I mentioned briefly about uh, my software company, orderflows.com. And the reason I, I bring that up right now is because, you know, the charts that I'm going to be using in this presentation are generated from my software. Okay. It's, it's, you know, you, you, you got to trade with, you know, something that is going to make your life easier. And I created the software for my own trading. And it wasn't until I started showing other um, trader friends the software that I was using, which basically took the basic order flow software to another level. You know, it's it really opened a lot of people's eyes and, you know, it really transformed a lot of traders from borderline, you know, breaking even some days, you know, up a couple hundred dollars, some days down a couple hundred dollars to being consistent. 
And that's what you want to be as a trader, is you want to be consistent. So before I jump in here, just a brief disclaimer, do understand that trading involves risk, okay? There's no guarantee in this world. You know, I, I like to think the markets will keep going up and up and up, but you know, there's there's going to be days that where the market pull back, right? John on the previous one, yeah, he just mentioned about Dow 120,000. I hope to God that happens, but you know, in the meantime, before we get to 120,000, it may come back down to uh, you know, 10,000 or 15,000. You got to realize markets fluctuate. So, today is September 17th, right? And it really has been a long year. We still got another quarter left. And it's just been fascinating this this year. You, you, it's like, what else can happen in the world and further step in the markets this year? You know, it's just it just seems so chaotic, honestly. You know, as as a trader, you know, you, you really want to make sense of what's happening in the market. You know, just some headlines. You know, global food markets brace for uncertainty in 2021 because of COVID. You know, traders brace for haywire markets around the presidential election. Global stocks and oil prices drop as investors brace for another week of uncertainty. You know, if if you read the newspaper or watch news, it's it's all basically just gloom and doom. Okay, you know, Donald Trump the other day, uh, two weeks ago, sent out a tweet. All right, hey, Dow Jones just closed above twenty nine thousand. Great news, yeah, yippee yippee. What happens? The market sells off the next day and sells off, you know, over the subsequent days. You know, yesterday, right? Jerome Powell, ah, but you know we're going to keep rates steady, okay? You know that that's should be good for the markets. You know markets did rally, but as Powell was talking, the markets rallied up to new highs and eventually sold off to new lows and went lower. And right now we're down another one and a half percent. You know, so don't panic. There's money to be made during market uncertainty, right? But keep in mind, you know, everyone always talks about volatility. Volatility can be your best friend, and it could also be your worst enemy, you know, it's it's like having a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you know, sometimes you love them, sometimes you hate them, you know, that's what volatility is. And I want to share with you order flow strategies that work in normal market conditions as well as volatile market conditions. Now, please remember, right, the market does not trade in a bubble, right, in the sense that you should look beyond what the bar right in front of you is doing and understand what the market is doing in general. Got to be asking yourself, is the market trending up or is it trending down or going sideways? Now, order flow shows where and how much traders are committed to the market. And that's important, right? Because when someone's in a position, they are committed to that position. You know, they're either going to be making money, which is good, or they're going to be losing money, which is bad. And at some point, they're going to have to get out. And that's all going to show up in the order flow. Now, you know, in the old days, you know, when people talked about order flow, you know, it was little ticker tape machines, you know, with with the, you know, the the prices coming by and the stock name saying, oh, you know, AT and T traded um, five thousand contracts at or five thousand shares at you know twenty one and, and three eighths. Now, you know, there's a time and sales. Everything is traded electronically. But to be honest, you know, time and sales moves very fast. And with the proliferation of algorithmic trading, you know, a lot of it happens on very small lot size. And, you know, it could be happening on one contract, one contract, one contract. Um, and it, it, you can't keep track of it. Now, what a lot of traders like to look at is the depth of market, which is the order book, right? Where you could see what the passive buyers or the passive sellers are doing, you know, how much they're working at a certain price. And you could also see, you know, when aggressive buyers or aggressive sellers are active in the market, you know, but to be honest, looking at the time and sales or looking at the dome is very confusing, right? You need a way to organize it so that you can use it, right? And we all like to think that we're the smartest person in the room in the sense that, you know, we, we could make sense of everything. But to be honest, when things are happening so fast in the market, it's very difficult, right? So you, you need a way to take all that information from the dome, from the time and sales, and utilize it. Okay, so a volume footprint chart, an order flow volume footprint chart, takes all that information, right? That's scrolling through the dome, that's moving so fast, you know, in a second, hundreds of contracts trading, or what you're seeing, um, you know, on the bid and offer, you see trades going back and forth. Okay, 
like I said, un unless you're a brainiac, you know, you're not gonna be able to make heads or tails of it. So why not take that data and put it into an easy to read format, right? Which is the footprint chart. So take all the trade data from the time and sales, the information of executed trades on the dome and put it in a chart format, which we're all familiar with so that we can analyze how much was bought on the offer, how much was sold into the bid. And you know, make make uh, educated trading decisions based on that. The footprint chart is going to allow you to see where buyers or sellers are stronger or weaker. You know, when buyers appear after the market's been selling off, or when sellers appear after a rally, right? That's very important information. You're going to see where the value is right now, where the market is trading. You're going to see when the market is getting exhausted. You know, and when people talk about, if you're not familiar with the term market exhaustion in terms of um, trading, you know what it market exhaustion is is, you know, think of this, right? Market's been selling off. Okay, where is it going to stop? Right, it's going to stop eventually, and it's often going to stop when the last seller has sold, just as a rally will stop when the last buyer has bought. Right, if there's no more buyers in a move up, then the buyers are exhausted. Right, what do you expect the market to do? Go higher? No, of course not. It's probably going to stop right there, turn around, and sell off. But the order flow chart allows you to see all that and much more. So what makes order flow so useful is you can use it with your existing chart, right? You could use it with time-based charts. You could use it with range-based charts. Use it with tick-based charts. So if you use a one-minute chart, you could use order flow. If you use a eight-range chart, you could use order flow. If you use, you know, a thousand tick chart or a thousand volume chart, you can use with order flow. If you're trying to read the order flow from the depth of market, the price ladder or time and sales, you really got to concentrate and you're just sort of limited to that that chart, that minutia in what's happening in the market. So, you know, this is yesterday. You know, I, all the charts I'm going to be showing you just happened yesterday. Okay, yesterday was a very fascinating day uh, in market activity. So, with order flow, there's three main things you got to keep in mind. And what they are is the delta, the imbalances, and the point of control. Now, the delta is going to be the net difference between the aggressive buyers and sellers in the market. You know, in the old days, um, you know, when the market would go up, you know, you'd call your broker and you'd ask, well, why is the market going up? You'd say, well, there's more buyers than sellers. No, it's going up because you have more aggressive buyers than passive sellers. They're buying all the offers on the way up and moving it higher. They're looking for the next higher price. And why that's important is because that's a piece of information you're going to get from the order flow. And it's called the delta, right? So if you see a bar that has um, positive delta, Right. What that means is aggressive sellers were in control of the bar and the delta on most order flow charts. Let me get my pointer here. OK, it will appear along the bottom of the chart. So you can see each bar has a delta. It's either going to be a positive number or a negative number. So when you're up trading near the high of the day, as we were yesterday um, around uh, 142, you notice the delta, right? It's negative, it's getting stronger negative. That's not a good sign of a market ready to go higher, right? We had just shot up, if you remember. Then all of a sudden, delta is getting negative and it's getting stronger, minus 83, minus 405, minus 450. So you know over these three, this group of three bars, there was some strong selling going on in here, okay? So if you're thinking, well, maybe this is a nice pullback, I could be looking to get long, no. Right. You should be thinking the opposite because you're seeing, well, there's some very strong selling going on. Now, imbalances is when you have more aggressive buyers than sellers or vice versa in the two-way auction between the bid and the offer. And it will appear in the order flow as a red number or for a selling imbalance or a blue number for a buying imbalance. Okay. And again, you know, that's important because in a bar, right? Some bars have evenly matched order flow, right? Where traders are happy to transact. It's not necessarily out of balance, right? Because you know, the market is, exists to facilitate trade. But when you start seeing markets going out of balance, when you start seeing bars with many selling imbalances, chances are the market's going to go lower. Or just if you have multiple buying imbalances, in that bar, in the two-way auction, it's telling you, you know, be, what's going on between the bid and the offer. Prices 
the market tends to go higher. Okay, that's why you see oftentimes in markets moving up, you're seeing buying imbalances. In markets moving down, you're gonna see selling imbalances. Now, the point of control is the price level in a bar with the most volume. Now, every bar has a point of control. And think of it as the value, where the value is in a bar, okay? And remember, markets move higher looking for new value areas. Markets move lower looking for new value areas. So, you know, keep those th three things in mind when you're analyzing the market. So a question that I got a lot, right, which is really what I wanna talk about on this presentation is, um, you know, over the last six months with COVID, um, with everything going on in politics is how to trade order flow when the market's very volatile. Well, the answer is simple. You trade it the same way, right? A, a big mistake that I saw a lot of people running into back in, in March and April of this year, um, basically blowing up, you know, or not say blowing up, but taking big losses on their accounts is volatility skyrocketed. If you remember VIX, um, you know, doubled in a, in a few weeks, went up to like what, 70s or something, which is off the chart, you know, it's off the Richter scale so high, is the way they handle it was they widen their stops. And when you widen your stops, you take on a lot more risk, right? I mean, who wants to do that? I know I don't wanna do that. I mean, you know, the whole point of trading to be successful and consistent is to limit your risk. As soon as you start widening out your risks, you know, when you take a loss, it's bigger, right? Uh, another mistake they started doing was, well, I got to fine tune my indicators to, you know, take into account all this extra volatility. So, you know, instead of looking at whatever, you know, a 21 day move or 21 period moving average, all of a sudden they're looking at, you know, 35 period moving average. So they're, they're trying to mathematically smooth out the volatility of the market. You know, and again, you know, they're, they're still, they're still running into problems, right? Is this, yeah, you know the, the I've worked with a lot of retail traders over the last several years um, since leaving the institutional side, and you know one of the big problems that it, retail traders face, and the reason why they're not so consistent, is they keep changing things. Right? What you got to do is you got to find something that works. You stick with it. You know, to good times and bad times. You know, I've seen people take three bad trades and immediately say, "Oh, you know what? This doesn't work." Well, you know, if you traded long enough, you know you're going to have periods, you're going to have days where it just seems you can't do anything right. You know, every trade that you take just doesn't seem to work out. You know, the that's how the market is, right? We we all want to have days where you know we got 100% winners, um, but those days are rare, right? I, I know guys that are, you know, some days they show me their their trading journal, the trading log. You know, they've got, you know, they end up, you know, the day a winner, but you know, they only had 20% winners on the day. You know, it's it's not about trying to, after the fact, curve fit your indicator or widen your stop um, so you could scoop up maybe some more winners, but you, your losses are so big. You know, that's not what, that's not how you trade in volatile times, right? Why take on more risk than necessary or trade the way that you trade under regular conditions? So order flow is about understanding the aggressive, what the aggressive traders are doing in the market. Right, and you can see it on a dome, but watching a dome, the depth of market, the price ladder, it's gonna give you a headache, right? Because the dome it is nice, it's a useful tool. I look at it, but I use it to help manage trades, but you know, trying to make trading decisions off of it, especially with volatile market, it's moving so fast up and down, especially with markets like NASDAQ, you can't make heads or tails of it, right? But if you have a nice way to organize it, which the volume footprint chart is, you're going to be able to see what's going on. Now, this was the low yesterday, the 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 new low around 2.30. We made a low eventually later on in the day. But at this low, by reading the order flow, you could see there was market exhaustion. You could see there was divergence, right? You're at a low, and all of a sudden, you're seeing buyers come in. That's what the divergence is in the order flow. So you're seeing aggressive buying coming in at the low of the day, right, which is bullish. You're also seeing aggressive buyers step into the market. You're seeing multiple buying imbalances coming in, and you're starting to see value start to move up when this whole time on the way down, it's been moving down, right? Now, on a bar chart, right, this is the low here. You're just guessing blindly, basically. You can't see, oh, is this, is this move exhausted, right? Is there divergence? Is there aggressive buyers? 
Are there buying imbalances? What's value doing? You can't make those decisions off a normal bar chart. So again, market exhaustion, right? When the last seller has sold in a move down or when the last buyer has bought in a move up. And here at the low of the day, right? We have a sign of market exhaustion, right? You can see it in the volume right there. It is one contract traded at uh, 75 and a half in this bar, right? The previous bar traded 17 on the bid. This next bar traded one, okay? So do you think this market's gonna go any lower, right? The bars turned around, closed higher, right? When we're trading right around the low, you finally get the last seller, clicks, sell. Uh, you know, we've all sold the low of the day. We all hate it, but you know, the market's moving down. You know, people are FOMOing, you know, oh, I gotta get short, I gotta get short. Finally, the last guy gets to his computer, jumps, hits the sell button, boom, you made print right there at the low, market reversed up, okay? Market exhaustion, that's this very simple concept in order flow. Now divergence occurs when buyers, net buyers appear at the end of a move down or net sellers appear at the end of a move up. And we have it here as well, right? We got our low of the day, we have positive delta, right? So again, delta is the net difference between people buying the offer versus people selling the bid, right? Those are the aggressive traders. So we're at the low of the day and for a market to go lower, right? As you see, we're taking out the lows of the day. We're doing it on negative delta, minus 500, minus 1500, minus 360. But we hit that low again, but now the buyers have stepped out of the woodwork. Yeah, this is a great time to buy, right? And they get long, they start getting long in here, 76, 77, 78, right? This is a divergence in order flow. Now, aggressive participants, right? There's two types. There's aggressive buyers, there's aggressive sellers. Aggressive buyers trade immediately by buying the offer price, right? They trade at the market. Aggressive sellers is sellers that do the opposite. They trade immediately by selling the bid price, right? They trade at the market, though. That's the important thing is they want to get in or get out of a position, so they're going to trade at the market price. They're not going to be working a bid or an offer in the order book. No, aggressive buyers come in and they start buying whatever's offered, right? And that's gonna show up in the delta, right? If you have positive delta, you have aggressive buyers. If you have negative delta, you have aggressive sellers, right? So what happened at this low of the day here? Positive delta, right? Also, you have the divergence. Even in the next bar, also positive delta. So we're starting to move away from our low and aggressive buyers still stepping in. And we rally up, right? We rally up you know, over 10 points and we get up here, what do we see? aggressive sellers coming in. Now we're seeing a negative delta, right? We're seeing negative delta after a move up. So two things are gonna be happening. One, either the move is gonna stop, or two, it's gonna go sideways, or three, the aggressive sellers are gonna take over the market and the market's gonna continue down. In this case, the aggressive sellers came in here in this third bar outside the box, slammed it, right? It was basically a five point sell off in 30 seconds, this is a 30 second chart. And then the market actually you know, started going lower again and eventually we took out the um, lows of the day, made new lows. So we see aggressive buyers coming in at the lows, rally up, aggressive sellers come in, take control back from the aggressive buyers and move the market back down. Now imbalances are the result of aggressive traders, right? So when a buying imbalance occurs is when the aggressive buyers outnumber the aggressive sellers in the two-way auction by at least four to one. Selling imbalance is the opposite. When um, aggressive sellers outnumber the aggressive buyers in the two-way auction by at least four to one. So remember, right, the market is, it's a two-way auction. There's a bid and there's an offer. Okay? It doesn't trade at a single price, you know, like it doesn't trade six and seven. It's five bid at six, six bid at seven, etc. So you can see there's, as the market is moving up, you're seeing buying imbalances. As the market starts, hits that level, pauses, starts coming down, you're seeing selling imbalances. Just on this move, this dramatic move down, you're seeing mostly selling imbalances in here, okay? Now value in a bar is regarded as the price level where the most volume traded in that bar. And the value level in a bar is the POC, it's the point of control. It's the price level where the most volume traded on the bid and offer side, okay? So every bar has a point of control. Every bar has a price level where it traded the most volume, okay? Then you can see in each bar, there's like a gray box around it. 
right? So as we're moving up from this low, right? On the move down, you see lower points of controls. Market's putting in lower value areas. We hit our low, market starts ticking up, moving up, higher point of control on the second bar, higher point of control on the third bar, higher point of control. It gets up here, we got a point of control around the uh, 88 and three quarters. Next bar, lower, 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 lower as the market continued on down. Now, all this information is there on the time and sales and the depth of market, but it's so confusing, right? It's all happening so fast in a volatile market. Forget about trying to look at time and sales. You can't, you can't keep up with it, period. Dome, okay, it's an acquired skill, okay? Um, but you're really focusing in on certain things, right? When you're looking at a footprint chart, you, you, you're seeing a lot more information than just staring at, uh, you know, 78 on the bid, 98 on the offer. You know, it's going to give you a better view of the market. And at that low of the day yesterday, that initial low at around 233, we're seeing a lot of things in the order flow that's very bullish. You're seeing market exhaustion. You're seeing divergence. You're seeing aggressive buyers. You're seeing value moving higher. You're seeing multiple buying imbalances. You know, it's it's like the planets are aligned, right, so to speak. Um, you know, it's like you, you you got a lot of good evidence that, yeah, this is probably the low for now, okay? Yeah, I could safely be buying it somewhere, you know, off this low, you know, around the 79, the 80, even 81 area, right? For a nice move up into a nice quick move again this is a 30 second chart you know you're talking two three minutes you know six seven points out of the market in the e-minis now on a bar chart you can't see what's happening in the order flow right you're not going to see that exhaustion you're not going to see the divergence you're not going to see the aggressive buyers you're not going to see the buying imbalances you're not going to see what value is doing so order flow is not about trying to predict a higher low, right? It's not, oh, you know, I'm gonna predict this low here. No, it's about reacting to what's happening in the market, right? Order flow is not an indicator, it's the market, right? The market tells you what is happening. You know, it's up to you to listen to what the market is telling you, right? It's, this is an e-mini one minute chart, okay? So this was the high of the day earlier, right? We, we probably about, uh, 40 minutes earlier, we had just hit a high, okay? After the Fed announcement, we rallied up. And at the high of the day, what are we seeing, okay? Well, we're seeing a divergence, right? Or we get up to the high of the day, all of a sudden we're seeing negative delta coming in here and, and getting stronger, minus 83, which is, you know, not the strongest number, but minus 400, minus 450, minus 566, minus 1050, okay? We're making this methodical move down, and in the order flow, we're seeing a lot of negative information, right? We're seeing aggressive sellers taking control of the market in the delta, right? We're seeing the value, which is the point of controls, migrating lower, right? They're moving down on each bar. It's not, you know, just sort of hanging around going sideways. No, it's lower, 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 lower. Now, the other important thing to note, you know, the thing with, you know, when you talk about value, in a bar okay most people don't talk about the value in a bar because they say well it's so short okay but do you ever wonder why the market pulls back exactly to a specific level in the bar well that's the value area generally right you can see on this move down okay we have this red bar up here at the top you see the point of control coming in here was at 34.18 the next bar trades right up to that level that's the high of this bar market moves down we put in a new lower point of control up here at uh, 17 and a quarter. The next bar, we trade one tick past it, okay? And put in a lower point of control. It's coming in here at 16, 34, 16. Next bar, we trade right to that point of control and sell off. Just as on moves up, right? We got the point of control here at uh, 12. You see this green bar? That's the low of this bar, right? You got this red bar here, point of control. It comes to within one tick of it, all right? This next bar, we trade up to this point of control, one tick past it. Next bar, this red bar sells off. It comes right back to that value area here before closing back in the middle. So, you know, it's it's fascinating how, why bars pull back to certain areas, 
but you can see it in the order flow why it pulled back to that area is because that's where value was in the previous bar. I mean, imagine, you know, being a trader, you know, a beginning trader and someone's telling you, yeah, I got a good idea of where the market could pull back to in the next bar based on what is happening in this bar. You know, that's very useful and good information that you can use in your trading analysis. Now, what else are we seeing up here off this high, right? We're seeing selling imbalances coming in, okay? All these red numbers in here, right? Selling imbalances. Yeah, we got a few buying imbalances. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, you, you do have some aggressive counter trade, but mostly you got aggressive selling coming in. So again, you know, at this high of the day, we're seeing a lot of negative order flow. So at the low, we were seeing positive order flow. At the high, we're seeing a lot of negative order flow. I'm not trying to predict, oh, we just hit this new high. I think this is going to be the high. No, I'm letting the market tell me that this is potentially the high of the day based on what's going on in the market. Now, just another quick market, the euro currency. Okay. Again, this was yesterday. We had this nice steady methodical move down as well, down into new lows, new lows, new lows, you know, from the 65 area where we're just trading sideways. But you're looking at the exact same things, right? You're seeing the point of controls moving down, right? You can see how on this move down, we literally just pull back within a tick or two of the previous point of control, okay? You're seeing negative deltas in here, right? So you know aggressive sellers are in control. You're seeing very little aggressive buying. Um, I don't wanna talk about much of this today, but I, I go over this in, other presentations is understanding the max and min delta. You see very little um, aggressive buying in these bars with the aggressive selling going on. You can see that in the max and min delta. You're seeing selling imbalances, right? Two here, two here, four in this bar, one in this bar, one in this bar, um, five in this bar, right? But you know, really these three bars right here should be the sign to you that this market is probably going to be making new lows. You're seeing market exhaustion in this bar, in this bar, the, the small volume being traded at the edges of the bar. Now, earlier I said in volatile markets, you trade order flow the same way. Why? It's because you're reacting to what's happening in the market, right? You're reacting to what the market is telling you and showing you areas. You can enter the market with potentially lower risk, so you'll be reacting to what the market is giving you. Now. I want to go through a bunch of different charts here really quick. And again, this was at the high of the day. Okay. So, you know, I just mentioned you, in volatile markets, you trade the order flow the same way. Okay. So this is an E-mini one minute chart. This is at the high of the day. Okay. And you're seeing value moving lower, aggressive sellers in control, very little aggressive buyers against that. You're seeing divergence at the high. You're seeing selling imbalance. You're seeing resistance selling, right? On a five minute chart, you're seeing the exact same thing. On a volume-based chart, this is a 2,500 volume-based chart. Again, you're still seeing, looking at the exact same thing. In this case, you don't have the divergence, but you got everything else. You got the selling imbalances. You got the um, net aggressive sellers. You got point of control moving lower. You know, everything is still the same. So the thousand tick chart, same thing, right? And you even have what we call a prominent point of control, this red point of control up here, which is very important in order flow analysis, it's telling you there's um, someone up here defending this position, it's resistance in the market, and it's based on what's happening in the order flow. You got your divergence, got your lower point of controls, you've got your selling imbalances in here, you've got your negative delta, all right? So, you know, it's, there's, there's so many different chart types, you know, so many people, everybody almost looks at, you know, a different, chart type, whether it's minute-based, range-based, tick-based, volume-based, but I'm showing you, you know, it doesn't matter, right? You can use your chart if you, and add order flow to it, and you can find yourself making better trading decisions. This is an eight-range chart. Again, all the same information on the minute-based chart, the tick-based chart, you're, you're looking at the same data points. It's all giving you the same information. So I just showed you five different charts, and it's not because I want you to have five different charts open and at once and make sure everything matches up. No, that's not the point. You know, the point I'm showing you these different chart types is because you're looking at the same things, looking for the same things rather, no matter what chart, 
or what market you're looking at, right? Whether you're looking at a one minute crude oil chart or a one minute micro e-mini chart, and you're looking at for the same information. Adding order flow analysis is the difference between success and failure for many traders, okay? And order flow generates a lot of useful information for a trader that you just don't get by looking at a normal candlestick chart. So, you know, why not use that information to your advantage? And the, the great thing is you don't have to throw away your existing method of trading, right? I'm just saying, why not add another tool to help you make more informed trading decisions? Order flow is trading in its purest sense. It's reading the market. It's reacting to what's happening in the market and being able to make a great trading decision. <coughs> Excuse me. So hopefully by now, you know, you should be ready to add order flow analysis to your trading. You know, even if it just helps you keep out of a few bad trades a day, you know, at the end of the month, you know, that could be the difference between having a successful month and a losing month. Now, there's different ways you can go about learning order flow, right? You can try and learn it on your own, right? You could spend years looking at a screen trying to figure it out. More importantly, you could waste a lot of money trading thinking you know what you're looking at, but you don't really, and you lose that money, you know, give it to the market and it's gone. You know, that, that's, that's to me, the, the biggest mistake a lot of people don't realize is, well, I'll just try and figure it out on my own. And, you know, they just waste their money. Or number two, you can get the education and software from a trader who has successfully traded order flow at the highest level for decades. You know, I, that's why I talked about my background earlier. So you know where I applied order flow. That was my career. It was trading, you know, for JP Morgan, it was trading for Cargill, it was trading for Dean Witter. That's how I made my living. And, you know, you don't last that long at these firms unless you're making money, right? They don't keep you on you know, a, a training program for two years, you know, if you're not making money for the bank, you know, in a, in a quarter, you know, like, what, what's your problem? Um, you know, so you're going to skip the massive trading losses because you're going to get the education and you're going to skip the wasted time searching on Google, trying to figure it out, watching videos. Oh, you know, is this what I'm supposed to look for? No, I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to look for. You know, order flow is the most current information available to a trader. It's not some indicator, it's just the market. Order flow is not based on pivot levels. It's not Fibonacci. It's not based on Elliott Wave. It's not based on MACD. It's not based on VWAP. Order flow is what's trading on the bid, what's trading on the offer. Order flow is the market. So the order flow is trader software. It runs on NinjaTrader 8. You know, that's the platform that I prefer to use. You know, it's it works great. Um, I haven't had any issues with it in years. And it's got a volume footprint chart with seven pre-programmed order flow indicators already in there, okay? And you're also gonna get my chart template and I'll also teach you order flow trade setups. Normally I sell this software for $8.99 on our website. Now, I'll give you guys a quick preview. Later this month, we're doing a upgrade on the software. Order flows trader 2.0 is gonna become order flows trader 3.0. And you know we're still working on it. I'm in the beta testing of the new software now, but it should be ready before the end of the month. And you know, if you get the software now, you're going to get the free upgrade to it. And if you have already have the software, you're also going to be upgraded for free. I don't like to charge people for upgrades. You know, you buy the software, you get the upgrades for free. But having order flow software is one thing, right? The next thing is knowing how to use it. Again, you don't just buy the software and oh, that's it, go on your own, figure it out. I also give you a lot of education on how to trade with order flow. And each week I do a private live group training just for users. If you can't attend, you can watch the recordings, but if you can't attend, you could ask me questions. And you know, people email me questions during the week and I try to answer them as well in the session. You know, there's over 80 sessions already, I think 86 or something that we've done over the last two years. And some people charge $200 a month for extra training. Why? You know, you, you buy a software, you want training on it, right? So why pay extra for training? I give it to you for free. But I also give you access to my order flow trading course, which is a course on 
trading with the order flow. It was 20 lessons, so 15 hours of video instructions. It's a great course for people that are new to trading with order flow. Now, for people that are already into order flow and they want advanced trading information, I also give access to my inner circle video series, right? It's a collection of 56 videos on advanced order flows, tricks, tips, and analysis. So, you know, the software is normally $899. The order flows training course 297. The inner circle video series 497. That's already 1693. Plus, you're going to get weekly live group training where you could ask your questions. Tell me, oh, you know, I don't understand this thing about the order flow. Can you explain it? And I explain it there for everybody that's in attendance. So think of it as this way: it's like skipping the line at Disneyland, right? It's like having Mickey Mouse come out and say, "Hey, come over here. I got a secret entrance for you." You know, where you know you're really brought up to speed. But I got a special bonus for you guys um, that come to my presentations through Investors Expos. I have a course called the Order Flow Playbook. Normally it's 297. I'm going to give you that for free as well. And it's a great course. It's kind of an advanced course on order flow. And then there's a bunch of trade setups in there as well. So you know when you add the order flow's playbook into that, it's almost two thousand dollars that you're paying for that. But, you know, you're not going to be paying that. But, you know, what other people are saying is, you know, they're saying, Mike, you know, here, you know, Sheila writes, you know, your order flow software is remarkably helpful. I can clearly see now what's happening in the market. Like, for example, who's in control of the market on a very specific time and who's getting weaker as well. You know, Ziad writes, you know, I'm very thankful for all the learning. And yes, my trading and understanding of financial markets are way much better than a lot of other traders out there. Okay. So, if you're worried you don't know how to make heads or tails of order flow, I also include two guides, my top three trade setups and hidden trading opportunities that will help you understand what you're seeing in the market. So, you know, to become successful, it, it takes work, right? You got to think about what you got to do, then you got to plan it and you reach success. So for a one-time payment of just 675, you're going to get my software, okay? So go to orderflows.com slash off to two, all right? It takes you to the page, all right? It's just a one-time payment. Now you have to pay, you know, your data fees. Of course, there's no way of getting out of data, but, um, you know, those those are minimal if you're a trader, right? It's cost of doing business. So it'll take you to this page. Just scroll down to click this button I want now, and you know, it'll just take you to PayPal. It's paid through PayPal. I don't get your credit card. I don't want your credit card. And after that, you know, it'll take you. Um, I'll send you out all the information. It takes takes uh, probably, you know, it takes a little bit of time to process it, but you'll get all the software and all the training and all the guides emailed to you to your PayPal email address. Now, if you want my book, go to this page, orderflows.com/book.html. You'll have to enter your name and email address. Make sure you put the book.html on the web address. It's not orderflows.com/book. It's orderflows.com slash book.html. After you enter your name and email, you'll be taken to a download page where you can download the book instantly. So, you know, the best piece of advice I give to you right now is get started, right? It, it's a small payment and of just $675, it's a one time payment, you know, and we're doing an upgrade of the software, it should be out by the end of this month, and you'll be able to get that upgrade, which is a big upgrade, right? I don't do upgrades. All the time we do them about every two years and we've got five five new indicators included in the software as well so after this month and when we release the new software actually the price is going to be increasing so this is your time to get the software at the lower price and take advantage of the upgrade when it comes out so thank you thank you anna um i don't have time for questions but you know if anyone's got a question just email me mike at orderflows.com and I'll do my best to get back to you, um, you know, relatively soon. So thanks, Anna, and I'll throw it back to you. My name's Ray Burchette, and I am the owner and operator of Trust First. And about 35 years plus of trader trader development. And today I'm going to help you understand strategy positioning the retail trader at advantage over institution, high freak, fair value, and other retail traders blind to market dynamics. And uh, can everyone see okay in the um, 
screen uh, Trader D says the site's not loading, or maybe he's referring to the prior speaker. All right, Curtis, thank you. I just want to make sure that we're all good. And I'm actually going to turn my camera on. It's going to be a little bit more engaging that way. We'll just let this come up. There we go. And so if you guys want, uh, you can see me. And hopefully it'll be a little bit more animated for you. So like I said, at the end of this, you're going to have uh, an understanding for a strategy how to participate at an advantage. And this strategy applies to any actively traded futures contract or stock. So it should be uh, pretty appealing to most of you. And I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. This is actually module one of my advanced training. And uh, again, the, the highlights are walking through the strategy, laying that out. And then I'm going to give you guys a summary page, a screen where you can do a capture or a snip where you'll catch all the highlights. So you can take notes. Certainly that's great. But I'm going to give you a screen at the end that you can do a snip or a screen capture, catch all that. And then I'm going to run through uh, some of the real big stumbling blocks uh, to folks figuring out how to be successful traders. So that's basically the way this is going to go and so uh, we'll just move along here this will let me go down all right there we go got everything working finally the way i wanted to so again as always trading futures options on futures and retail off exchange foreign currency transactions involves substantial risk for loss not suitable for all investors Past performance not indicative of future results. Information presented is for educational purposes only and not to be used as trade recommendations. And the reason I say that, and I've been doing this since 2013 uh, with my current clients, um, I don't know any one's individual uh, situation uh, for the most part. There's a few that I've been with who have been with me uh, for five, six, seven years that I'm very aware of. But for the most part, people coming in, I don't know your profile, your comfort level, uh, your risk tolerance, your experience, your supporting environment, your motivation, how you're capitalized. So it's real tough to comment on risk specific to the individual. But what you guys learn from me is how to position against institution high freak fair value and other retail traders blind to market dynamics to gain advantage and that gives you a foundational strategy that you can build on and as i said it works across uh, futures any actively traded futures contract or stock so the big thing that i want you guys to take away from today, and this is why I named uh, the company Trust First. That's everything. Nothing happens without trust. It's the engine. And you can think of most of us having a thimble full of knowledge for the power and construction of trust. And so what we do is we turn that into a bucket full. And that's why traders gain significant uh, improvement in a short period of time. And trust is one of those words that's uncomfortable to talk about. You know, I'm sure you don't go to a cocktail party and uh, it's at the tip of everyone's tongue, right? And it's also one of those words that we hear where we kind of stop listening because we think we already know everything we need to know about trust. And the deeper we go, it's like anything else. It's like you keep seeing more and more doors open and stepping through and get more and more power. And what that trust is doing, it, it think of the power it gives us as the patience to wait for the market to align with strategy and the strong conviction to execute as intended. And if you have spent any time at all with trading, you understand 
that that's the biggest challenge to be able to wait for the market to align and then execute as intended. If you guys want to just chime in, how many agree with me? Or better still, on a scale of one to 10, how strongly do you agree with me? That the biggest challenge in trading is not figuring out what we want to do, but it's waiting for the market to align with our strategy and then executing as intended. So again, this engine here, I'm getting a lot of tens, I appreciate it. Um, in the middle here is uh, the cognitive engine that optimizes decision-making and execution. It's real. And this is what I break down and teach in basic training. And when we understand, have the scientific understanding for how to best direct and support improvement and performance, everything changes. In other words, our focus shifts from following rules and completing tasks to achieving the high awareness to follow rules and complete tasks most effectively. Effort becomes much more precisely targeted. We have high sensitivity for preparedness. Uh, we're really becoming more and more proactive and that's the key to getting ahead of price movement. All right, so onto the strategy. We have to understand the battlefield, right? You look at military intelligence, they spend a boatload of time trying to assess the enemy's strengths and weaknesses, their vulnerabilities, and where they want to engage them. And it, it's gotten more and more sophisticated. You know, the US military decades ago uh, developed night vision. And ever since that night vision, when does the US military engage the enemy? At night, right? And that advantage is now gone, but for years and years and years, that was their big advantage, night operations. So we've got to look at what we're up against and how we stack up against that, our strengths and weaknesses. And that's how we begin to develop our profile. And through that process, we're gonna understand where we're best suited to compete. And once we get that, guess what? We're way more likely to trust ourselves. We're much more targeted in our effort, much more sensitive to our preparedness because we have a much more tangible understanding for the benefit of our approach, how we're gaining advantage. And we're not going to put in the time, we're not going to make the commitment until we, we really trust that this path is going to get us to where we want to go. And so it starts understanding the advantage. So let's take a look at institutional traders. And they're the ones that started the derivatives, uh, the S&P index because it made their hedging way, way more efficient. Instead of having to push around a whole bunch of stocks, now they could just figure out how many S&Ps they needed to uh, hedge their portfolio. And then that expanded to the Dow and then to the NASDAQ and the Russell. And the point I want to make is the institutional traders have deep, deep pockets. In other words, they're using their portfolios as collateral for their margin to trade futures. It doesn't cost them anything. Does everybody get that? I mean, it costs them a minuscule amount in, in salaries and functionality. But as far as what it costs a retail trader to participate in the market on a percentage basis, it's incredibly small. Does everybody understand that? And the big thing, the big advantage that institutional traders have, they're trading the trend. They're in the market for days or weeks or months. They're not jumping in and out. And they're able to do that, again, because they have all of this capital in their portfolio that they can put up as margin money. So when you hear people talking about the trend, 
unless you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in a trading account um, to hold positions overnight, you're probably not going to be able to trade the trend. Does everybody get that? Because truly trading the trend is you stay in your position over days and weeks. So that's the big advantage institutions have. They can trade the trend. They've got deep pockets. We're not going to do that as a retail trader. Next is high frequency traders. They trade for a tick. If we move from 33.75 and a quarter to 33.75 half in the ES, that's a tick. And that's what high frequency traders are set up to grab as many ticks as possible. And to appreciate how fast their platform and network is, they can trade over a thousand trades a second. I'm not talking a thousand contracts a second. I'm talking a thousand separate trades a second. Do you guys know that? And these platforms and networks cost a boatload of money to build and a boatload of money to keep up. And they're pretty expensive to operate too. But they're just printing money for the most part when they're set up correctly. So guess what, as a retail trader, we're not gonna have the money or the knowledge and expertise to build a high freak platform and network. Just not going to happen. So we're not going to compete trading for a tick. Next are fair value traders. And they participate based on deviations from price that they deem to be fair value. Usually it's a certain spread between cash in the futures market. It's a pretty simple concept, but volatility plays a huge part. And it takes a boatload of experience to be an efficient fair value trader. It's not something that you're gonna learn in a day, in a week, or a month, or you know, as the song says, not even a year. It's gonna take quite a bit of time. So real tough, not that, you know, three, four, five years of trading experience, a retail trader can be a fair value trader, but early on, it's just a real tall order. And often these fair value traders are associated, have access to a high freak platform. So that's another advantage that they have. So again, where is our advantage? Where are we gonna be able to be successful as a trader? Well, the institutions are not going to um, concern themselves with minor price adjustments. They're already hedged, right? They're already hedged. So if we're looking for minor price adjustments, that have a good chance for volatility, then advantage to the retail trader over the institution trader. So everybody get that? Because we don't have to worry about them coming in and stopping the market. And here's the neat thing. If they do come in, it's because something big is starting to change and they're likely gonna be on our side. But for the most part, they're not going to concern themselves with these short-term shifts. But if they do, it's a great bonus for us. Everybody tracking what I'm saying here? Now, high freak guys, they don't like those short-term shifts in momentum when volatility kicks in because that takes away their power. Does everybody understand that? They can't run their coffee grinder in a volatile market. So they turn them off, they go to the sidelines. 
So again, if we can identify those short-term shifts in price movement, you don't have to compete against the institutions. We don't have to compete against the high freak guys. And the other nice thing about it is these shifts usually happen when the market is close to fair value. In other words, there's not a deviation that is going to make the market attractive for fair value traders. So we don't have to compete against them. So it's pretty good, huh? We can find these situations, these short term shifts and direction that are likely to trigger some volatility. If we don't have to worry about the institutions, or if they do come in, they'll be on our side. We don't have to compete against the high freak guys, and we don't have to compete against the institutions. Does that sound pretty good to everybody? Can you see the benefit of that, right? Because what's the strength of a retail trader? No one has a gun to our head. No one's telling us when we have to trade. We get to decide. We can do nothing all day long. We can do nothing for two or three days. We can do nothing for two or three weeks. We decide when we want to participate. We can wait until the market is begging us to participate. And you know what? That's what the smart money does. They wait until the market begs to participate. They don't worry about being first. They don't worry about catching the full move of the trade. They just want to consistently catch a nice chunk of it and not get chopped up waiting to start a position. What happens with most uh, retail traders? They try and catch the whole move and get chopped up because they're trying to be first instead of right. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Fear of missing out? So what we want to do is we want to identify when those minor shifts are likely and the probability is pretty good for price acceleration. And that's what we want. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to construct an intelligence package identifying market conditions where we're going to get those minor shifts and probabilities pretty good for price acceleration. So this is from September 3rd, September 2nd into uh, September 3rd, really the first, second into the third. So this was um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday before Labor Day. And this is when we were grinding to uh, the new contract high in June. And it was up at that 75 half, I believe. Um, I should say for Dece and uh, the SEP, it was up at 87 half or 87. But what you're looking at is a strategy. And these green horizontal lines are my proprietary value level calculation. This is part of what I teach in advanced training. And I worked out this calculation in 1997. That's when we were in the middle of the bull run, the great bull market, if you will. And it seemed like we were making new highs every day. And I'm in the S&P pit, and I am just not comfortable. Um, I didn't have a way of assessing uh, risk as the market was making new contract highs. You know, everyone was using, using Fibonacci price extensions, but where's the benefit in doing what everybody else is doing, right? So I uh, put my thinking cap on. In 92, 1992, I bought TradeStation. This is when you could buy the software. I think I spent like $2,500 for it. And um, I bought uh, a couple of pretty beefy gateway computers and uh, you know they were the spotted cow if anybody remembers that brand 
They actually had the best laptop at the time, their color book. I bought one of those too. So I spent, uh, I want to say about sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars in hardware, software, and trade station, and a PC anywhere, and then a, a PCMIA card for my laptop, so I could have that uh, cell network. Uh, in other words, pull up charts, trade on my laptop wherever I was. This is in you know like you know nineteen ninety seven, nineteen ninety eight, right? It was pretty cool. So basically for that it was i know well under twenty thousand dollars um i uh i created what it was going to cost me I, I think it was bloomberg they basically wanted to give me the same setup and i say give me uh for about seventy five hundred dollars a month so my monthly cost was future source. It was about $250 a month, but I digress. The point is that I'd been building this database since 1992, and I started to really make a lot of uh, use out of it. And I figured out this calculation projecting resistance above the market. And it changed my trading in a huge, huge way. Now I had anxiety down energy up um i just had great understanding for the market and things got a lot lot better and i was doing okay as a trader but things took off i mean once i figured this calculation out um you know i had great great years uh balance in 97 the last quarter and then 98 99 2000 um when the bubble burst. But anyway, this is, uh, you know, the strategy and I can't get into, you know, breaking down all the tools and components, but this is what you learn in advanced training. So imagine how much lower your anxiety is when you understand your strategy placing you at a uh, an advantage over institution, high free fair value and other retail traders blind to market dynamics. And you basically have a price map. Pretty good. So I know you're probably thinking, well, what happens when the market goes down? Well, here's the strategy triggering yesterday afternoon as the market softened. And notice the value levels don't change. Once they're calculated, they stay the same. Now, here's the cool part. I can adjust the ratio for volatility, but the, the calculation doesn't change. We're just using a different ratio. And again, it doesn't matter the market, this works. And again, you know, the biggest thing, and I caution anybody when you go to, you know, buy a software or sit in a trading room or, you know, work with a guru, um, you know, they're telling you what to do. You're playing to follow the leader. Um, and often uh, not, they're not teaching the actual calculation and the science behind it. And I do all of that. I teach everything behind it. And then you still have to give yourself time. I call it the observation validation cycle to see that consistently work. And it's through that process that you build that trust. That's the word again. When you see this consistently working, you see the advantage you give up if you don't wait for the strategy to trigger. You see the advantage you give up if you don't execute as intended. And it takes time to appreciate that advantage. And then once you do understand that advantage, you wait, you execute as intended. But that's not going to happen, like I said, in a day or a week. I tell my clients, hey, watch this consistently play out time and again. In the ES, oil, gold, 10-year NASDAQ, over three months, six months, 
And then you'll have that trust to wait for it and consistently execute. And again, this is the biggest thing, the biggest opportunity to improve as a trader, understanding the power of construction of trust. And again, think about it as the high awareness to follow rules and complete tasks most effectively. That high awareness comes from specific beliefs and behaviors that cause us to be much more aware, much more responsible, much more thoughtful. And that's what I teach in basic training. But this is what's happening with the strategy, the value levels, and there's other parts to the strategy, other tools. This is just about, you know, 20% of it. Um, there's a whole proprietary method for keeping the energy driving price movement top of mind. There's another piece for understanding uh, what's happening in the trading dome, the price ladder, when we want to go and participate. So we're not distracted by all the noise. Um, there's another big part that develops awareness for the fundamentals with the potential to impact the market. Like tomorrow, we've got expiration this morning. Um, we had weekly jobless claims. We had uh, Philly Fed. We had housing starts and building permits, all big stuff with the potential of impacting the market. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. I'm gonna go back here um, again. So now this is the slide I want you guys to uh, copy. Move my mug out of the way. But these are all the requirements for the strategy. And we learn all of this in advanced training. We've got to know the mechanics controlling the market I should say the uh, forces, the the factors at the higher time frames that are controlling the market at the lower time frames. This is another area where uh, day traders just starting out get in big trouble because they're so locked in on a small time frame that when they're getting chopped up, they don't understand why. They don't understand there's a higher time frame like a 50-day moving average or a big fib controlling the market. And then when acceleration comes out of nowhere, where they want to be adding to uh, a winner uh, in, in staying or at least staying in the market, they don't understand why the market's accelerating and they miss out on a great opportunity. So we really have to understand the higher time frames. And then, as I just alluded to, we have to understand the fundamentals that have the potential to impact the market. And we cover those in the daily briefing, which is the technical briefing and then also the fundamental briefing. And then the other thing we've got to do is we've got to use highly correlated tools. So we're validating what we're seeing across multiple tools and also have the agility to recognize the tool that's gonna give us the best trigger given market volatility. So that's another part of the process. Again, that requires the observation validation cycle to understand how these triggers work under different conditions of volatility and why they consistently work well under a specific conditions. And then we have to go down to a deeper level. We've got to really define the trigger, the actual trigger for entry and exit. And so when we have all of those pieces, we've got that tangible understanding for our advantage over institution, high freak fair value and other retail traders blind to market dynamics. We trust ourselves. We can wait for the market to align. We understand the advantage we gain by waiting. We can execute as intended. We understand the probability is high 
for the market to play out as we've prepared for. So does everybody have this slide snipped, copied, captured? You guys just want to chime in. I don't want to take it down until everybody has it. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. So now I want to talk about the Achilles heel of most traders, why they really struggle uh, to be consistent over the long term. Um, number one, they don't speed up the brain to get through information fast enough uh, to stay ahead of price. And if you're new to trading, you understand it's a pretty eye, big eye opener how fast things move. It's a hyper dynamic environment, not all the time, but when we have the greatest opportunity, things are moving fast, right? What's a hyper dynamic market do? Generates a boatload of information and events, compresses them into a real small time frame, less than a second, requiring immediate analysis, decision, and action. It's futures trading in a nutshell. And your brain has to work a lot faster than it likely did in any other endeavor prior to trading. And so, again, we take care of that in basic training. And most traders fail because they never went through the exercise we just did, identifying the enemy, defining their strengths and weaknesses. I mean, I just brushed on them. Right, I told you where to look, what to think about, what to pick apart. You know, it's not what I say, it's what you guys do. You've got to validate what I've laid out, and then you'll start putting it to use. And so this strategy that I teach is the foundation, it's just the start. And then you'll see how these tools can identify other opportunities to use the strategy. But we're just teaching a, a, a base strategy so we can get one thing right. And in trading, that's all we have to do. We just gotta get one thing right. We build up our account, getting that one thing right. We go from a one lot to a two lot, we keep doing the same thing. Just that one right thing. Then we go from a two lot to a four lot, a four lot to an eight lot. You see the progression? But you gotta be able to do one thing, just one thing where you consistently wait for the market to align with strategy and execute as intended. And you're not gonna do that one thing unless you understand the benefit it gives you, how it places you at advantage over the folks you're competing against in the market. And so to do that one thing, we've got to be able to quantify and qualify the market. It takes an intelligence package to know what to do, why and how, or when. Meet that golden rule, only trade when we're certain to stay confident in a strategy, committed to waiting for market alignment. We know what we want to do, why we want to do it, how we're going to do it. All our energy is available to develop awareness for when to enter and exit. Strong conviction, deeper understanding for the power and construction of trust. Now we have that high awareness to follow rules and complete tasks most effectively. That's the game changer. We're seeing and filling gaps. And better still, we're getting ahead of our knowledge and competency gaps by developing high awareness for opportunities to go to a deeper place of understanding for what we believe we already know. So we get ahead of the gaps. And all this happens as we develop a more complete understanding for the power and construction of trust. So what I wanna do is, does anybody have any questions about the strategy? Let me go back up to it here. I 
I know it's really simple, but what I've done is just laid out the highlights for you guys to think about. And if you want to learn the strategy, if you want to see how it works, if you want to have that daily support, then you can do that with advanced training. And I'll explain that in a minute. Is this suitable for Forex? Absolutely. Again, the analytical tools that I'm going to teach and uh, the proprietary methodology and value level calculation can be applied to any actively traded futures contract or stock. Ernie, I, I'm going to read what Ernie says. And, and great to hear from you, Ernie. And I've enjoyed Tim. He's been in with me. I know he's uh, been busy with some family issues, but uh, I asked him to pass along greetings to you. Ernie says, hi, Ray. After eight years, I still go over these studies and methods every time I want to go forward. This is the best deep mental course there is. I highly recommend this course. Best money ever spent on trading. In the end, it's all mental. And so I'll tell you a story about Ernie. Um, he took my training. I, I would do it live uh, once a month over four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, about an hour and a half. I think it went from 3.30 to uh, 5. And Ernie was uh, one of a handful of people that asked me to do a live training. So about 10 people came from uh, all over the U.S. One person actually came from Dubai. And uh, after doing the training multiple times online, each time they get more and more out of it, um, they came for it live in Chicago. That's the basic training. Um, but anyway, Ernie, I appreciate that. And uh, just so you guys know, that was not staged. That was a, a pleasant surprise. Um, I've been doing this since 2013. And, um, you know, I'll present for a, a bunch of different groups and it never fails. I'll get someone that's gone through my training that's back in and listening. Um, Antonio wants to know when we get the recording of the webinar. Yes, I'm sure Anna's going to send it out. She always does. She's great about that. Um, so if you want to learn this advanced training strategy, or anything else, uh, go to trust1st.com. Trust1st.com. And the homepage has a description of basic and advanced training. You can click on the store. And advanced training is $145 a month. Try it for a month. You don't like it, quit. Um, but if you want to keep going, there's savings. If you want to sign up for the full year program, or you can just keep going month by month. And then you can get the um, details for basic training. Basic tr training is 40 hours over four months. It's on demand. First 20 hours are about seven hours about six hours of instruction, 14 hours of exercises. So 20 hours over the first four weeks to learn how to build, take care of, and add horsepower to this cognitive engine. And then the next uh, three months after that, 12 weeks, there's a reflection cycle, uh, one reflection each weekday for 12 weeks, 60 reflections to teach you how to fine tune this engine to your specific needs. And it makes you, you're learning how to develop and support high intuitive function. So think of that as strengthening the behaviors that cause the brain to filter process and apply information most effectively. And um, I'm actually doing an all day training this Saturday. So if you purchase basic training, you can come to that. And a week from Saturday, I'm doing all of advanced training live online as well. So if you're really interested, not only do you get the on-demand learning modules, but you can come to the live training uh, this Saturday if you purchase basic training. 
Um, and then next Saturday, if you purchase advanced training, but all the details are at trust1st.com. And I encourage everyone to read the reviews. You can contact me through the website if you have any questions. You can actually sign up for a consult, a 15 minute phone conversation about your trading and see if you fit with trust first. But again, it's like anything else, you know, we're in a time where everyone wants that 10 second sound bite to feel good or pop a pill and uh, be brilliant. But, you know, it doesn't work that way. You got to roll up your sleeves and do the work. And so that's what I do for my clients. My clients range from folks just starting out to folks like Ernie, who'd already been trading for seven or eight years. And just wanted to get better. He was doing fine, but he wanted to get better. And then I have a whole bunch of folks in between that at one point or another red pilled themselves and understood that there wasn't uh, any quick fix to learning how to trade. You really had to put the time and effort in, build the foundation, and go there. You weren't going to sit in a trading room or buy a software to tell you when to buy or sell and uh, be successful over the long term. All right, so Anna, that's everything I have. Um, just at uh, about to click one o'clock here. Thank you so much, Ray. It was great having you back on our show. I always appreciate it and your kindness and having me on and everyone else trusting me with their time. And, Have a great uh, rest of your week, and thank you so much. Anna, I appreciate it. I just want to, if I can, reply to Ernie. He just uh, put in another nice comment. But Ernie, if you have a chance, go to theotherai.com, and you can catch up on what I've been up to. The rest of you can go there, too. In addition to Trust 1ST, you can go to theotherai.com. I'll shut up now, Anna. Thanks for indulging me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, thanks so much to everyone who attended today's show. Don't miss our next event on September 24th. Uh, this session was recorded and recording will be sent to your email. Just in case if you didn't receive the recording, simply go to our YouTube channel type in investor expo into your search and here you will be able to find videos from uh, previous presentations and the one from today uh, happy trading to everyone and have a great rest of your week